What's up? We're back. What are you drinking on there, man? What are you sipping uh, on? Just a little water. Just a little water. Hey. <laughs> I lowered my seat lower than yours now so that you feel... Nice. So you feel strong and mighty. I appreciate it. <laughs> I hired my seat just hey. because I wanted to feel strong and mighty. <laughs> Anything that makes you feel... More comfortable? Yeah, I, I got a short man's or small man's uh, attitude, so sometimes I have to be a little... Small man syndrome? Yeah, small man syndrome, you know? <laughs> I definitely have that. When I was growing up, I definitely experienced that. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Is that the equivalent of like a like chihuahua, if you were a dog? I know, see, I guess so, because <laughs> a chihuahua doesn't know that they're as little as they are. Dude. And that was me, man. That was me. Uh, I was always a, I wouldn't say I was a bragger, but I, uh, I definitely thought I could take on the world if oh, yeah? I wanted to. Oh yeah. Oh heck yeah, dude. That was my downfall. Napoleon, man. Definitely a little. Hey, but that guy actually almost took over the world. Yeah, but he was also an asshole, so <laughs> it, it also just drove him to the brink. Yeah, you know? it did. It did. It put, he pushed a little too hard. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, man, I've been having some fun today. I'm still on vacation, so it's like. Actually, to, for some reason, like, honestly, like, I'm looking at you, and for some reason, today is, like, the first day that I actually see you, like, smiling uh -huh. and relaxed. I'm relaxed, dude. Uh, you, you really genuinely look relaxed today. Why is that? You've been on vacation for a week. Uh, I think I finally, like, my sleep has settled in. Like, I'm sleeping in a little bit more. Like, usually I'm up, like, crack of dawn, and, uh -oh. and so I'm, like... You didn't get up at the crack of dawn today? Uh, I got up at 6. Okay. Fell back asleep. Actually, Had six is late for you, huh? Yeah, six is late. Four thirty is about my average yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it takes me about a week to kind of like curve that. Yeah. And today I slept right through till Very six, cool. dude. So I felt rested. Um, definitely worked out. Went and hit. I hit. Jumped in the garage. And got my workout on. Nice. Uh, right on, man. Did a bunch of laundry. Cleaned up a bunch of stuff that I wasn't gonna. I've been fighting to get rid of, and yeah, today's been a good day, man. That's cool, man. It sounds like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying. I can see it in your face. I'm telling you, I can see it in your face. You're, you're... I watched two good documentaries, too. Everybody's like, how can you watch documentaries if you're doing something? Hey, you should have gone with me earlier, man. I didn't know. You should have told me. I would have waited. Dude, I, I went from here. Okay, so from Norwalk to Huntington, dro dropped off Humana, dropped off my uh, baby Luca. Oh, man, then you backtracked. Then came here. And then from here, well, no, I had to come and get the, the double axle oh, trailer. Oh, that's right. You gotta get and then I had to hook up. And then from there, I went to Gardena. From Gardena, I went to Van Nuys. From Van Nuys, I came back to Huntington. And then I was going to shoot over to Temecula, but then uh, I stopped there. Damn. You're going to go to Temecula? Well, I was going to get a really good deal on something. and um, But I decided not to go that route. And uh, we're going to go with the, with something new instead of something used. To, to me so Temecula is... Pain in the ass to get oh, there and to get that, back. It's, it's so hot right now. I'm yeah, just, yeah. We're, we're what I'm talking about is um, we've been getting like uh, some extra things. And so now that we're teaching outside, we've been talking about this over the weeks and stuff. Uh, we need different types of tools or just more of them, right? Uh, so when I went to Van Nuys, I went over to Rev Gear. Uh, we have an awesome Rev Gear poster right behind the camera. It's so sick, dude. I wish we could get a picture like a. Like an image of that, dude. That's it's just sick, dude. Rev Gear sent us this to put up, and uh, we decided to put it up in our in our uh, in our uh, recording studio, and uh, it looks awesome. Like I love it. <laughs> and, It'll be up today. Yeah, sick, dude. Uh, so I love it because it's it's uh, it's somebody uh, wrapping their hands up like they're about to go to war, dude. It's, it's just yeah, sick. Uh, yeah, yeah. Me up. Anyways, so I went over to Van Nuys today to go pick up um, some more pods. What well, we call them body bags. There's like, there's like these, uh, they're individual units where you can beat up, throw around, and slam, and wrestle with, and do groundwork with, stand up work with. Uh, Pretty durable, too. Very man. durable, very, yeah, very durable. Yeah. Uh, they're built right. They're different weights. So they have um, 25 pounds, 35 pounds, and 45 pounders. Uh, they're, so it's, uh, they have red, blue, and green ones, like an army green color. Those are the 45 pounders. Uh, it's sick. It's sick stuff, dude. And uh, right here always takes care of us. So I went up there and. Uh, Went ahead and got those, and uh, those were actually, um, uh, actually, before I say their name, I should probably ask first if I could say that. They, I was going to purchase them, and uh, two people stepped up, and uh, they're actually covering it. 
Oh, really? Yeah, and it was like a thousand bucks. That's awesome, dude. It's, dude, I listen. You guys know. I mean, I'm trying to provide everything that we possibly can to make this awesome, even while we're outside. So to see that people are seeing what I'm doing and just stepping in at the right moments, because I mean, for me, a thousand dollars right now is a lot. Thousand dollars for anybody right now is it, a lot. Uh, and and also when it's on top of your business. Yeah, and, man. I mean, every dollar counts yeah. right now. I mean, you guys know we've been closed for three months and. We're getting back on our feet, and then closures happen again, or semi-closures happen again and all that. So, you know, for someone, or for, in this case, two people to step up, and hopefully they give me the, the clearance to, to say their names. And, uh, but they, I just, oh, man, I can't, I just, I'm just thankful, dude. I can't say enough about our team, man. Yeah, that's pretty cool, dude. Yeah, that's so, cool. Uh, so that was one thing. And then the other thing is that I wanted to pick up some astral turf. So we can put on the blacktop to protect our kids a little bit more and stuff. Uh, because no matter how clean we are out there, it's it's a blacktop. It's made out of tar and oil. So as it gets hot, it releases some of that like film. So you know the kids get, leave home, they're dirty, like their knees or hands, all that. And yeah, it's not a big deal. It's crop, but it's still our kids. And and if we can provide something that makes our program a little bit better and it, and it and it helps the environment to be easier to learn in. I'm all for it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and make that investment and get the AstroTurf, and we're going brand new because there's places that sell like used AstroTurf, and we were actually debating whether or not we wanted to go that route. Um, but I think we made a good decision, and we're just going to get new because you know with all this COVID stuff and, I, and all this I stuff, think like we just want to make sure that we provide the right best thing to do. Yeah. You know, those things can. I was telling you this yeah. earlier that yeah. those things can be a little raunchy. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we go new because we do want to provide the best for our programs and for our students. Uh, especially our kids program, man. I mean, they do so much for us, and, and we love our kids. It's our future. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we just canceled that other Temecula trip because that's where they were going to sell oh, us really? that. And we're actually getting it from the company that sells all new stuff. So we're going to pick that up tomorrow. Nice. Yeah. So cool. uh, starting tomorrow, if I get it early enough, we could probably even use it tomorrow. Uh, we're going to lay it out, cut it out the way we want it. And nice. Yeah, man. It's not cheap, though. <laughs> do those football well, fields and soccer fields, like, like, I can't even imagine like having that much square footage because it's expensive, dude. Oh well, how they get theirs is grants and stuff like that. I don't have a grant. <laughs> no, no, no. But that's how they get yeah. theirs is through grants. And yeah. so they act like they spend the money, unless you're like a private college. Yeah, I got Gloria to uh, okay yeah. that grant. <laughs> yeah, that, it's it's from usually, our funds. It, don't don't let people think that it, that's there's a reason why most high schools didn't have it up until oh yeah just like two years got ago. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now every high school, almost in Orange County, not every high school, but almost. almost yeah. I mean, the big, definitely the bigger ones, like around here, all have AstroTurf, dude. Yeah. And it's grants. That's Very all cool. it is. Yeah. Yeah, I've had a really busy day. Uh, so this morning, it started off at yeah, 6. Yeah, you're flying in here, dude, man. I, I even asked you if I could just sit for a little I bit. I was like, I felt your, like... like I took care of business today, like, though. I man. felt that energy. Like, you know you can feel different people's energies. I felt that energy, dude. Yeah, I took care of business. I feel good, though. I got a lot done. I was like, damn. I made a lot of phone calls today, right and I made some like, like real phone calls today, like uh, stuff that can change the future. So, oh, really? Yeah, nice, yeah. nice. So, good stuff. Good. Uh, got nice. a lot done. Yeah, I asked you if I could sit down for a little bit because I was I drank one of these things like in one drink, dude. Oh man. Like, yeah. Oh. I uh, yeah, dude. I was going nuts this morning. I woke up early. I'm really I, happy that you're on vacation, dude. I woke up. I didn't wake up early. I did wake up at a decent time. Well, it's, it's early for most people. Yeah, yeah. For you, it's late. Yeah, and got stuff done. Washed, like, 90% of my laundry. Like, I never catch up on laundry, dude, because they're, all three of us are battling over the washer and dryer, dude. Mm -hmm. and so I does just, Shane do his own laundry? Shane does his own laundry. Dang, that's yeah. cool. Gabby does her own laundry, and I do my own laundry. Why doesn't Gabby just throw yours in with her? Or you oh, throw no, hers no, in no, with no, yours? no, no, no. I, I I wouldn't I don't mind doing laundry yeah. I don't mind doing her laundry either No 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 she likes it Oh she likes it a certain way, way. Oh, Okay and, and I'm the same way dude it's uh, like oh, I'll clean my stuff dude Yeah Oh yeah Well I don't know in my house we ha it's kind of weird maybe I don't know it's just different right in everybody's house but like in my house um anything that has to do with the outside of that property or on top of or below or around the property that's me <laughs> All right, and then anything inside, uh, Gloria usually takes care of. Supposed to be me, yeah. yeah, yeah. I the same. It's kind of the same thing, but yeah. uh, I've gotten a, now. I cook, clean, yeah. 
I love Gabby cooking. cleans. I, she's a clean freak. So well, your house I can't, is nice. I can't say that I clean like she cleans because my yeah, clean. When is I went to your house, different than her clean. You're like, oh, just sorry, it's a little messy, and I'm like. You think this is messy? <laughs> she was clean, man. I was like, this is not messy. <laughs> but maybe for her standards. For her standards. Yeah. Is, that's what my mom is. Yeah. You go to my mom's house? My mom's house is spotless. Yeah, your dad's mom's house. That's kind of like how Gabby's like, like every day. It's yeah, like. Straight up. My know? mom's house is. Sp- you, could, you could surprise them. Knock on the door any day of the week and it's always going to look the same. Dude, I could literally. Do what you did yesterday. Clean up this area. Yeah. Do whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then somebody do like that, and I wouldn't see it, and I'd oh, walk away. She'd know right she'd away. She'd come in, and you didn't do shit. <laughs> you look at that. <laughs> I've had it happen. <laughs> oh, my God. I was picking up dog crap the other day. Pick it up. Yeah, yeah. It's, grass looks wonderful. It's funny. We got some color in. Cause, Good. The sun. Uh, the sun and the dog. You know, it gets patchy. Sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all filled in now. Yeah, it's filled in. It's nice, and I'm cleaning it up. And you know, dogs go like five times a day, dude. I come back at the end of the day, and she's like, "Are have you ever cleaned up the dog shit?" I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you "I talking about? I did, man. I did. <laughs> Look at the turds out there." And, you know, I'm like, "You know what? The dogs are alive." They, they I, I told her, "Hey, man." There's a pooper scooper right there if you feel like I need you to do good. You did not send Gabby to go I pick up poop. I, she wouldn't pick it up anyways. Gabby, that's not your job. She wouldn't pick it up anyways. Dude. She wouldn't anyways. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> there just end up being 25 bombs out there instead of 10. Well, but you only have one dog. That's easy. She shits like a machine, dude. One dog is easy, though, dude. I had when, three dogs you know, at one point. Um, our dog is pretty easy with the exception she's blind and like and diabetic, hey, dude. dude. When you guys get your pool, I'm not even trying to make a joke of it. I'm sorry, Gabby. I'm not trying to joke. Hey, you I got get in your trouble. Pool, your dog is going to drown. Dude, I got in trouble. <laughs> so, I'm not I'm kidding. So, your dog's going to fall in the pool. Well, we well, I don't know. We're still thinking about it. It's it's. We saw how much money it's going to cost. Oh come like, on! And then, uh, but yeah, I made a bad joke, and she was like, you know. Because we were like, how, 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 how are we going to, you know, expenses, monthly cleaning bill? I said, well, once blue falls in, and <sighs> <laughs> we'll have to worry about that. Dog food? No, no more dog food? That's about no 500. More, no more medicine? medicine. <laughs> I said, that's a, that's a hefty expense. <laughs> I did. I got Dude. the wrath from all my kids. My kids, well, all my not, kids are there. Well, and, Gary, that's not funny. <laughs> it is funny. You just laughed. Dude, how dare you? That's what she said. She said, you have to Sickest, like to men in mind. That's just yeah. That's just sad, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> oh, somebody's dog, dude. I love that dog. It's a great. It's been a great dog. He will fall in the pool, though. I'm not even joking about that. I am. That's one of our worries, of oh. course. Like, but by the time they finish the pool, the dog's <laughs> <laughs> the dog could. I'm just this saying. Dog, dude, I'm just saying. Let me tell you this. This dog seems to find ways to stay alive after like. Not to mention that your home value is going to skyrocket because you guys are going to do that pool area like a line um, yeah exactly we're gonna, dude, it's, it's, gonna, gonna look, be sick. it's gonna look pretty sick dude. yeah that's one thing gabby's like no we're going like full on spread on this thing not only that but it's healthy for the family you guys get to hang out you guys all this covet era stuff dude if you well, want it you could just you could just chill out in your backyard well, forever they're saying for like two years that this could be like the norm <laughs> yeah the norm i mean it'll obviously get better but you know, we could still have these there are fluctu- changes, though. Yeah, yeah, these fluctuations of closures and oh, stuff yeah. like that. And and dude, we can't fly anywhere, so it's like, yeah, you know, so we, that'll be your vacation. We spent fact, six months building it, and then hey, then we go. You know, next yeah. summer they'll we'll probably get to... it done sooner than that. Well, it depends on the time of year. It yeah. Depends on when we start and yeah. whatever. Yeah, because so. it snows in California. <laughs> well, it does rain. That does oh, cool. throw a damper, dude. Where are you going to get any rain? You know what? Way? I said that with my wall. I built it. We had a, a guy come in. <laughs> I remember that wall. It took me a freaking three months to get that thing done. Oh, man. Because we had an El Nino storm just wipe us out for like not three that, weeks. But I saw how much they dug for yeah. the foundation. I was like, oh, my God, Gary, how does your house not tip over? Underneath yeah, the house, dude. it was dude. nuts. And it looks great. The guy did a great oh, job. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, he filled it all in and yeah. whatever. I don't think but... I've seen a foundation that well built. Ever. And, uh, dude, there was so much water <laughs> under there, though, when oh, it rained. Like, oh. Yeah. Oh, we were so worried that, like, 
we're going to lose the corner of our house right into this. That's a little scary. Yeah, we said the same thing. Oh, no, it doesn't rain that much here. Thanksgiving, we'll have it by Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, Christmas, day before Christmas, it was done, dude. It was like, so like three weeks. Yeah, it was a nightmare. So what's up? So did you guys hit the go button on that or no? Uh, we're still looking into it. Well, he's still, Gabby's still talking to your dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but the pool, though. The, I mean, listen, that's going to happen. Listen. I, I think it's going to happen. But listen, anytime you do anything through me, it's going to happen. I think I think it's going to happen, but it's a matter of, there's a lot of little things. Like, we just, we, we just did a bunch of shit to the house, you know? That's okay. So, we just put in a brand new AC. Listen, when are you going to, listen, when so are you going to, so check this out. When are you going to move out so of that so house? check this out. Never. The guy comes over to, to give us like the experience of like, oh, we're gonna do this in the pool, uh, do this. In the pool. We just need to see where we can get an excavator in. Goes to the side of the house. He goes, man, you guys don't have any room on either side of the house. On the right hand side. What do you mean? No, no, no. Because there's not enough room where the wall was built. Uh, they took over like a half an inch or whatever. And then so he goes to the other side of the when house. When I went, yeah, it, there was a lot of room there. A lot of room there, yeah. yeah, yeah. But then we went to the other side of the house. He was like, this should be good, but now your new AC unit will have to be undone and taken out for us to even. <laughs> so there's some. Uh, Why didn't you put the AC unit on the roof? Nothing flat up there. There's no, we don't have any flat areas. It doesn't have to be flat. Dude. Yeah, I don't want it on the roof. It gets, it. <sighs> I don't want, it looks like. Crap on your roof, Gabby. Oh, man. She didn't want it on the roof either. She knows more of that about that crap than I do. Well, then that's great. Then that means that you guys are gonna have to move your air conditioning now to get the excavator in. How about uh, that? That's probably gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so not just that, not just that. Then we have to spend two grand for the. So gas. You gotta remember, I did real estate for so long in all of Southern California, and like so, when you do real estate a lot in uh, in certain areas where like lots are smaller and stuff. Um, there's a lot of workarounds, and one of those is the uh, AC units. Uh, even if it's not flat and stuff, there's so many like um, they've gotten so smart with this stuff. So even when the roof is not flat or there's no flat areas, they have these like um, things that they put on the roof that makes it look like yeah, it's part it of the roof and stuff. And makes uh, your roof look like crap. Nah, you can't even see it. Doesn't Anyways, mess with it. but now okay, that's fine. We've come to a realization that we'll probably have to move it for like four or five days. Yeah. Yeah. Like, more than that. Yeah. Well, they said four or five days. Yeah, they said that, Gabby, but it's more than that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we, and that's what we anticipated. Uh -huh. That's what we anticipated. But then he goes, oh, crap. No pain, no gain, man. No. Then he goes, your gas line is, your gas thing is too far over. If we come in with the excavator, it's going to hit the gas the excavator's going to hit either your wall or the gas. Tell them to go to Home Depot and get some people to help with and do it with the shovel. Uh, hey, this guy's putting way too many. They said that was going to cost way too much money for. Hey, dude, this guy, does this guy want to do this job or not? I don't know, man. It doesn't seem so, like So, dude, my wife does not think like just Joe Schmo get a pool in there, you know. Because I, I, I talked to Edwin and I was like. Edwin will make it happen. And he was like, gave me all kinds of numbers. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And Gabby's like, nope, dude. She watched this TV show called Pool Kings. Gabby, you need to stop watching stuff. Hey. You need to stop watching TV. Period. And Watch, you know what she did? Stop watching the news. She called the Pool Kings. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> but everything they're oh saying God. It was like intense, dude. It was intense. God. Are dude. you gonna be? Hey, are you gonna come out on the TV show? I, I, I hope not. That'd be so awesome if you came out on the TV show. I'll wear my book going Yeah, there. that's so dope. <laughs> I don't know, dude. She loves all... She loves design. I, she should have been a designer. She even says that. Oh, man, I'm sweating. Why are you crazy. rubbing your eyes, dude? Like crazy. Are you crying? Crazy. <laughs> you crying? Just, I'm fine. I'm chill. I just pouring down into my eyes. That's because I got you on the hot seat right now. Yeah. Yeah. So All right. So this contractor is just saying, oh, this and that. and th You know what's happening every time he points a problem out, right? Zing, zing, yeah. Zing. He's adding to that price tag. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all these problems I have. Yeah. And if you want me to build this, then yeah. I, you're going to have to pay. Yeah. we got to pay the gas company 2000 bucks to move the gas the uh, line. I, I would have told him immediately. I don't care if he's the, what, the king? What? Pool king? <laughs> what is he? The pool king? I tell him to get off my property, dude. So I'll get someone that wants to work. Oh, dude. He, he brought out the bells and whistles. Though. It looked pretty cool. Ridiculous. 
It's ridiculous. Hey, hey, whatever. A happy wife is a happy life, dude. If that's what she likes, that's what she wants. That's what she wants. Hey, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, What are you going to do? What are you, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? We can sit here all day and debate it. Nope. But there's nothing to debate. Nothing at the to end. debate. Nope. You can you can say I'm wrong. Hey, I could be wrong. And all you're day. not. And you're not wrong. <laughs> I'm not wrong at all. You're not. You're absolutely right about this one. <laughs> hey. You're right. I've, I've learned to just surrender, dude. Yeah. Just there's my flag. Yep. I go like this. Guys are like the guys look at me and they're like, dude, you're just like a beaten man sometimes. I'm like, yep. I've learned to just say. Okay. You're like a you're like a horse that's been broken in. Okay, that's what, that's what it sounds like in my house. Gary, we're doing this. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't ask any questions. Whatever way they pull you, that's, that's the way you go. That's like that one night you called. <laughs> that's like that one night you called and you were helping us with uh, refinancing. Yeah. And uh, she was trying to get me on the phone. And I didn't know you were on the phone. I'm like, leave me alone. I know. <laughs> I know, I got all mad. I'm like, Gary, what are you talking about? Leave me alone. We're talking about something important. Put your game on. You were like, <laughs> I was you know, gaming. gaming. Dude. I'm like, put your game on pause. I'm about to of, save you thousands I, of dollars. I was Call of Duty. I was like, ah, be quiet. That's so funny. <laughs> I was like, she's going to do whatever the hell she wants to do, anyways. <laughs> what the hell does it matter what I say? Oh, that's funny. And she does all right. She's like, she nah, that's cool. Hey, but seriously, though, all joking aside, I'm excited about your pool, dude. It's, it's, I. If, I'm excited about it too. Especially if she's been to Alani and she loves it. She's, I know she's thinking about making something like that. Uh, yeah, dude. Waterfalls and everything. Oh, dude, you're going to well, do a grotto? No grottos. Oh, grotto. She wanna, dude, but we're doing listen, a, dude. But we want to do a Baja deck. You know what a Baja deck is? Like where it's shorter? So, no, no. So, what it is is instead of uh, like stepping in the pool, oh, climbing down, you, it's almost. It's going to go like this? Yeah. Like a, dude. <laughs> where you can lounge in the pool. Like you're at the beach. That is sick. <laughs> are you, oh, are you serious? Yeah, yeah, we're doing a ball thing. I'm even more excited about this now. Yeah, where you just you can just walk into the pool, dude. Dude, that's sick. Yeah. And then I'll have a sauna. I've always wanted a sauna. Are you guys going to do a salt filter or a regular filter? Um, I don't know. We haven't decided yet. Mm. There's, there's, a there's a lot of there's, there's pros and cons. Yeah, there's a lot of new innovations, too, yeah. that are happening. Yeah, that yeah I'm like, sure. Like... They're trying to set you on this, and it's. You guys should go and get the solar. Oh, uh, we're because now we're you have thinking, AC and the pool, and the solar thinking, will take yeah, care of all of that. We're thinking about that too. Yeah, we're at now. It's open a whole new. Uh, I got a guy for the solar, dude. Hook you up. Got a guy. No guy. Yep. That's what they say in New Jersey. Hey, man. Hey, it, forget <laughs> about it. I know a guy who would take care of that. Hey, it sounds like you got a lot of projects coming up, man. I fell off the truck, dude. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. That's all. That's, dude. I, I used to have a friend named Rick, and he did. Every, he's an older gentleman. When I was like in my twenties, we played. Uh, our kids played softball, our baseball together, and it used to drive me crazy. Ah, oh, it is what it is. That was the saying, dude. It is what it is. It is what it is. He would say it for everything, right? <laughs> everything. Uh, good guy, yo. Mm. And I don't, but he would say it for everything. Now that I'm older, dude. <laughs> It is what it is, dude. I totally get that. <laughs> hey, so there's things where you can fight for, and there's things that you just go. Yeah, there's something. I, I don't know why this triggered that. What you're saying right now. Okay, so you know how we bow in, right? Yeah. Kira, we put two fists together. Yeah. Right. So we make a we make a fist with each hand, and then we touch our knuckles, and we put our hands and feet together, and we bow, and we kira, right? Mm -hmm. Kira means to bow, in Hebrew. As I was going through a martial arts career, training... You know, and, these mean things, right? Yeah. You know that, that Well, that's actually what I'm getting to. So as I... Like now, for example, when I teach a class, I don't make two fists. I make one fist and one open fist. And I put one over another. And then I say, kira. But that happened over 15 years of, of me going through yeah, hell and, and back. Learning, learning yeah, all that yeah. stuff. And it means something. And so, you know, this guy's saying, it is what it is. Right, this is saying something. Yeah. This, you're at you're at you're you're saying you're okay to fight. Yeah. You're okay. You're you're open to be a warrior and whatever comes your way, you're you're willing to meet that force with force. Yeah. That's what that's saying. Well, I also got to a point, just like this gentleman and just like you, you said you got to a certain point where you're like, I get it now. I say <laughs> it is what it is. Where, you know, you accept it. This is you accepting the universe. Yeah. This is you saying, Okay, I do have the force to do it, but I accept it. 
right? Yeah. So it, I don't know why I, it, it just came to mind, it's, but it does mean something different. Open palm to a closed fist yeah. as opposed to closed fist to closed fist so, and then bowing. People don't realize you you can tell what kind of mood I'm in when I teach a class. Depending on... <laughs> depending on <laughs> there's different ways. Yeah, Seriously. So Usually by the end of the class, I do this. Yeah. I say, keep yeah. You know, to say thank you and, and that's because you exercise the demons after class, exactly. And then now you're in a peaceful but mode. Thank you. There's a lot of times where I've like I've done this or this, yeah. And it's taken me a long time yeah. to understand what that meant. Yeah. But the the um, the original format or the original um, way to bow into a Krav Maga class uh, was fist on fist. Fist on fist. Yeah, well, fist yeah, because it was all it, contact. Yeah, it's all contact. It, well, it originated from military, right? I mean, that's what you're learning. Uh, but like I said, uh, you know, we we went up in rank, going through all these tests, getting broken in, going through the instructor stuff, all that, all that, all the good stuff that comes with that, right? And uh, yeah, I'm at that point where it is what it is, right? You know, yep. I just accept it. it. Is Boom. What it is. You, you know? accept it and yep. move on. Move on. No complaining, no crying. Well, it is what it is. I'm still here. I'm saying I'm still here, but I'm accepting whatever it is, the, whatever yeah. fate that is. I'm doing it. I'm you can fix it. things, but a lot of times people don't want to be fixed or things don't want to get fixed, you know? No. So you just learn to move on and work around it. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, if you get stuck on something, you'll always be stuck on something. So you learn to. It is what it is. Become water. Yeah, become water. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, thanks for coming down. I know that, uh, that you had a lot of choices of what you could do while you're on vacation, and you chose us. Ah, uh, hey, man. Hey, you teach today, too, right? I teach today, too, yeah. I'm, shoot, I'm going to be... You're going to be warmed up by the time you get up there. I am warmed up right yeah. now. My balls are so wet right oh. now. <laughs> You realize I'm going to have a hell of a time finding this to clear it up. God. I'm sitting here in this leather chair and just like... Um, it's, uh, you know, we were out there... It's Ooh. like two little water balloons. We were... <laughs> We were out there. We were out there. I got back from from driving everywhere today, like all over Southern California. Dude, I couldn't imagine. You're here at what time? What, I mean, you were here like at three o'clock or three fifteen. Yeah. Or well, I got here at, at nine today, and uh, damn, yeah, dude, yeah, I got, I've been, and then I got back and to then, go to Van Nuys and yeah, back, dude. That uh, was yeah. Took us fifteen it's hours. Funny that one day. It's funny because uh, Gloria called me and she goes, "You're like you were in a quarantine." She dude. goes, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "Why? What's up?" She goes, "It sounds like you're." busy it's like you know kind of how you told me like you felt the energy or yeah, whatever yeah. <laughs> i go i am busy babe i was like what's up she goes i'm oh, just checking on you i was like thanks i was like i'm, I'm a little busy he usually abel's like hey what's up hey today there was no smile on his face i was like oh what's going on uh, what did i walk into i was taking care of business and uh getting a lot done and there was other things that weren't getting done and i don't like that oh yeah, huh. i don't like that I, I like things to get done so and uh, if I wasn't there at that moment, certain things wouldn't have gotten done the way they're supposed to, and I didn't like that either. Well, yeah. So you're the boss, man. That's I'll what just, makes you the you boss. Know. Well, no, it's not that. It's just uh, it reflects all of us. It's a school where uh, we're all pulling, you know, including me. We're all pulling, and uh, uh, if one faction of the group uh, is looking or during do, uh, doing things a certain way, it reflects on all of us, whether that's good or bad. And so I just I just like to tighten that up a little bit every now and then. Dude, so I left here, was it last night? Yeah, it was last night. It, it feels like it was a couple of weeks ago. But it was last night I left here, and I went home, and I watched episode 17. Just sat there. And How was it? Yeah, it was all right. Yeah. I mean, not one of our best ones, but it was all right. There's some funny moments. Yeah. You can definitely tell we break in there, and then when we come back, it's just like we're snapping on all cylinders. Hey, so I was thinking how we can get an AC in here. Yeah. So you mentioned portable AC. I have a portable AC at home. We have a second story upstairs. So we don't have to go through the cement wall. <laughs> I was desperate yesterday. So I said, we'll go through the cement wall. But we don't have to. This is, this is a regular. Oh, really? Yeah, we could I could put, put a vent. In. And then we have 22-foot ceilings on top of that. So we could just vent it out. That's it. And we're good. That would be the easiest fix. Well, I got, I got one at home. Let's I don't know do what we'll I'll, do I'll it. put it in the work. I'll, I'll I'll make the the hole and we'll make it happen. Yeah, I don't. I'm sure we could yeah. if we do that. I mean, it's just a little portable one. Yeah, whatever. It's actually a nice one. We spent like three hundred bucks on it. Well, so. that's yeah. I mean, that's dude. We can borrow it, dude. I got to show you Shane's room, man. This kid, uh, he's I kinda, in, honestly, 
I I'm kind of like digging the boiler room and how we're sweating. This is funny. It's funny that we're like sweating this much. It, it's just part of the joke now. Dude, but when so... we do, but when we do have guests, that's it's gonna suck. <laughs> unless well, like a we third do person in here, dude. Unless we Ooh. do it like you said, where it's like real early in the morning or just really later on in the evening. Yeah, yeah where the uh, weather yeah, outside yeah. settles yeah, down yeah, a little bit. Because yeah. these walls just cake in the heat. Well, these, this wall right here and then this wall behind me, yeah, there's, cement, the there's cement walls. And they're yeah. facing the yeah, sun. Yeah, they're facing so the sun. They're naturally just getting heated up. And it don't matter how much wind is out there, the sun is just absorbing. And what's funny is that during wintertime, it's freezing. freezing. It's the opposite. Yeah. We which, were which catching okay. just the beginning of that when we yeah. first came in. Which is okay. For me, it's okay. I don't mind that. I'd much rather be a yeah. little cooler. Yeah. And, dude, I'm like a 60-year-old woman, dude, with all my... <laughs> Did you say 60-year-old woman? Yeah, dude. I get heat flashes and shit. And, <laughs> and like, you know, I'm like a cranky old woman, oh, dude. that's funny. I'm serious. That's part of the thing. When you take out your thyroid, you you have tendencies to have, like, heat flashes. And, really? Yeah, dude. There's, some, there's a lot of little things. Your, your testosterone levels are, like... All over the place, so dude, it's like. So you're like a. <laughs> that's why my mustache hey, grows in thicker now. It's hey, like. So you're like a teenage elephant bull. No, I'm like an old elephant bull. No, the teenage ones, their hormones go crazy. So sometimes they're like super happy, and then sometimes they're just raging and they flip cars over and shit. And then sometimes they're just like they fight each other, uh, like they, they do all kinds of crazy stuff because their that's, hormones all over the place. Yeah, so do six year old women. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be my mom, dude, when she was going through menopause, dude. That's what I am. I'm pre-menopausal, dude. So we were at a we were at a trip, and um, we were in one of those cars that it's kind of like protected, like a safari type style car. And we're driving. We're in the middle of nowhere, and, and we have to stop, and we slow down. And we're like, why? Why are we slowing down? And the guy's like, um, he's like, look at those bushes over there, and they were kind of like moving, right? Like not not like not like a wind moving. It was like. Like something was shaking it, right? And they're like, so they slow down, and they're like, sometimes it's uh, like it's a animal crossing, so it could be like elephants or whatever, whatever Whatever's type of like giraffes or whatever. And um, yeah, it was it was a it was an elephant bull. And then they're like, oh man! And then so so they're going so they're going on the road, and then they slow down. If it's just regular elephants, they just have to slow down a little bit, and then they cross, and nothing happens because the matriarch she'll just walk everybody away from. The vehicles or whatever, but the teenage, the 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 elephant teenage bulls, they're crazy, dude. They're unpredictable, and so they they they're going, and then they see that it's just one lone one, and then they're like, oh, they start backing up. Oh, dude, really? As soon as they start backing up, the 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 ears elephant, come out. the elephant starts going like with his ears like forward, you know, and then like making noises, and then like doing this to the floor and like stomping, and then they they continue backing up, backing up, and then they get like far enough, and then they stop. So now we're like maybe maybe a hundred feet away. It's still not a lot, but we're a hundred feet away, and the bull's just staring at us. And then we're just waiting, and we're just waiting for him to cross so we can go. Just stare at us. We're waiting. It's been like twenty minutes now. He's just staring at us. And then we're like, all right. At what point are we gonna say let's go around, blah, blah, blah or whatever? But they're like, no. Like for us to go around, like it's just wait, we have to just wait and let him. <laughs> and then so he just and they finally got bored. Like it was like twenty five minutes. He got bored of just like dogging us. <laughs> Just staring at us, and then he just turns around and leaves. <laughs> His hormones came down. What a punk, dude! He was just punking us. That's, yeah, what he was that's doing. how I feel, dude. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. That's <laughs> how I feel. There's times where it, all it, anger and rage. Yeah, t- at times I'm. And then he just let it go, dude. I, I'm an emotional person to begin with, and then like five years ago, my life changed, dude. I can cry, like, like I see something, I'm like. Whoa, whoa, what's going on? I can't control like emotions and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I can yell, get pissed. The next thing you know, I'm like, it's all right. That man. sounds like you're bipolar, dude. Don't say that. Because <laughs> that's what my wife says, dude. She says I'm bipolar and I'm not bipolar. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm no expert. <laughs> but what saying. you just named. <laughs> But I don't do it like in front of everybody. <laughs> I'm joking, man. I was kidding. I didn't know I was gonna hit a nerve right now. <laughs> hey, Gabby. That's what I was afraid of, dude. I was afraid of like mental health issues because whatever. If you're bipolar, you just have some medicine, dude. You're good. Yeah, I mean, you know. You're not bipolar, dude. 
No, I don't think I am. But, you know, <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, the last couple of years have been oh, that's funny. horrible. Yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, like, if something happens to me, just, like, emotionally, I have, can lose it. I can... You need to go punch something, dude. Well, that usually helps. That definitely usually helps. But it doesn't help when you're, like, emotional, like... <gasps> <laughs> 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 no, I gotta rewind that. I'm gonna play that back a couple of times. <laughs> Who's crying? You're crying. Oh man! I'm uh, telling you, dude. You need I to mean, go, hey, listen. That's what you need to do. You need to go camping, dude. I would love to go camping. Yeah, yeah. let's go camping, dude. I'd love to go camping. I, I'm telling you, I would love to go camping. I, uh, <laughs> not cry. My sweat is dripping in my eyes. Um, yeah, man, I would love to go camping. I uh, saw Ryan last night, and he was said he was out camping and having a good he time. He looked all refreshed. He dude. did. He looked all this is a good. He's like, yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, you son. Of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. Other people's hey, pleasure pisses me off. Hey, listen, does. that guy has so many choices. It's that bipolar thing. He just and he like, chooses just to live a clean life, dude. Just he, you know, he camps every weekend. Every dude, single that guy's always like. I think I'm going up to the hills. Yeah. What the hell? Every single weekend, he'll either go, well, he goes off-roading. Either uh, that he or he's a freaking Unabomber and one of the two. <laughs> he's doing <laughs> weird stuff. No, he, he does. He, he's always going out somewhere and he likes uh, photography. Yeah. Well, I know. I've seen some of his Yeah. Photos. So he's, he goes out and he takes some legit photos, yeah. man. It's cool stuff. Yeah. So I watched a documentary today on uh, the Black Godfather, dude. You said you watched it, but that documentary uh, just... Pump me up. I was ready to do a podcast right after that. You know, he was just like, he was like, you know, if somebody gives you a gift right here and you choose not to use it and you choose not to push on, you know, that's on you. If you make it, it's on you. And if you don't make it, it's on you. Yep. And uh, yeah, so that guy, when he said, just, and it was only like a little snippet when he said that uh, in that whole documentary, but that's what I came out of it. It was like, that's why. Isn't that weird when you see something and you get like, you see a little about that much and. But it does a lot to it you. It does a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know that's why. Um, that's one of the reasons why I like working for myself. It's my fault oh, if I, I don't could, make it. I could believe it. It's my fault if I don't make it. Even through all this COVID stuff and all this, I think that, um, I think that that I should be able to make it through all this. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And uh, so. Whether I fail or whether I succeed, that's up to me. And I like that. I know that it might be might not sound like it's the most stable thing to do, but I like that. I'd, I'd rather not work for somebody. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. I, I'm a lifelong worker for somebody. <laughs> and uh, it's no fun, I man. mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we've talked about this. There's nothing wrong well, with that. It's just, it's, I just, I, I it's get just that. Some, it's just a mindset. Some yeah. people get it, like... <laughs> I'm not. I'm not very happy with my job. I'm like at the point where it's like I want to work for myself. I want to do something on my own. I want to be the guy, and uh, not being able to do that, dude, and just being a government slave is like. Whew. Hey, where was this? Uh, where, where was this guy from? He was somewhere from. So it was pretty interesting. The reason why he has an interesting story is because uh, he, he was, was doing illegal stuff, though. No. No, 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 no. He wasn't. So, uh, just the story is, is he um, grew up in the South, and as he was growing up, uh, his parents, he, he beat the crap out of his stepdad, because he beat up his mom, and his mom was like, you gotta leave, or he's gonna... So he left, and when he left, he went to New Jersey. When he went to New Jersey, he didn't want to work. He's always been like a kind of stubborn guy, and he didn't want to work in an environment where he wasn't free to like work and do something creative and do whatever. But he got in with this guy named Glazer who was the head of like all these, he like jazz musicians, right? And this Glazer guy was like, you're a pretty amazing guy. Nobody, but he's the black godfather, right? His name's Clarence Evant. And back then it was unheard of to have a, black manager or a black. Got it. Oh, I see. And this Glazer guy was like, dude, I don't see you as a black guy. So this is for like the music industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see you as a black guy. I see you as 
A salesman? I see you as a guy who can... You know who I was thinking of? American Gangster. Oh, no, 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 no. That's what I was thinking. So you got to see this this documentary. Okay, yeah, yeah. The Black Godfather. Okay. So And it shows this guy come up through the music industry. Right on. In the time of the Civil Rights Movement, in the time of uh, where people couldn't, like, be on right. a black bus or a white bus, you know, a black guy couldn't be on a... You know, that whole thing. Yeah, segregation. This guy ended up became, becoming an executive... Wow. People don't know this, and he was he, well, like me. There were you got to watch it because you'll get why I say he's a lot like me. He wasn't very educated. He cussed up a storm. You cuss, I, dude. You don't even know how much I hold back here. <laughs> and um, you turn purple sometimes. Yeah. You, you want to say something you don't. <laughs> uh, I've it, actually gotten some requests of uh, releasing the Kraken, man. Just letting you be, man. <laughs> I'm like, you guys don't know what you're calling upon. You guys have no clue. Uh, it's I like hard. the mild. I like I like the spicy but every, mild. Every uh, once in a while, dirty. if you notice, like I'm, uh, I have like a pause when I say something. And that's you working on it. It's because I can't yeah. drop a. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I threw that in there for a purpose. But every once in a while, you, you know. You really don't care how many hours I put into editing, huh? You just don't care. Yeah, it's just an adjective, dude. You don't worry about it. It's not going to hurt anybody. If you're hurt by what I say, then, you know, sh- edit that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even so much about hurting. It's just like, for example, uh, I drive in the morning, right? In the morning, we usually listen to Theo Gary yeah. and Abel and Poppy. And guess what? It's really hard to explain uh, to Jimena why Dale Gary can use those words, <laughs> and she can't. Because he's crazy. He is crazy. He's, he's got I a do say bipolar. That. She laughs. What did she tell you when she saw you on sa- or Sunday? Uh, what did she say? She says, I like your horse sound. <laughs> the horse sound know. is him being edited <laughs> because he said something that I had to edit. I had to, yeah, so it was like a horse oh, laughing. Episode 14 is probably oh, one of my favorites. Funny, it's hilarious. I don't know what we were doing that day. That it was just both of us were hitting, but it was funny. Well, you know, usually when we're talking about our stories, like that's when we do the best. Yeah. Like, when we talk about like how we were growing up and stuff, because it's just it's easy. That's that's easy, man. Like, you know, <laughs> I can do that all day long. You know, you know, ask me about when I was growing up. I can give you a story about something. You know, so those are the best ones, and they're funny because it really happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So. <laughs> In in high school, did you have a uh, were you popular guy? In high school. In high school, dude, they still talk about me now. Oh, uh, legend, baby. No way. Yeah. Of course, man. What do you? Come on, man. You were popular. I, you know, I wouldn't say popular. Um, definitely, if, if I didn't show up to school or something, everybody'd know that I was missing. You're like Paris Bueller. He's sick. He I'll take it a step. Today. I'll take it a step further. He's dying. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, no, actually, no. I always, I never like. I was always at school. I love being at school, man. I love being at school. You I, know, I, I did, but for dude, not I, not the school reasons. I dude. thrived at school, man. So did I. Dude. And I wasn't because of school, because I was there to learn, dude. I was there. <laughs> I was there to have fun. I was there to pick up girls. And... Well, I was there. Like, listen, I was there to have fun, but it was more fun to me to know that I took care of like what I had to do with my grades and stuff, and then. Just know that everything's good at home. I'm not going to get in trouble. And then, like, I could still have fun on top of that and do all these extracurricular stuff, you know? I was involved in everything, dude. Well, you know what the fun part was? Is my mom never had high expectations like, <laughs> for, my, for my educational side of me, you know? And so... Did you get good grades? Hell, heck no. Was no? I able to? Probably. I, well, I, like what? Like, what kind of grades did you get? C's, D's, F's. Dude, F's? I went that direction. I didn't go the other direction. Dude, you gotta work hard to get an F. You do have like, to. You gotta work, work hard. at it. You do have to work hard. You literally don't do anything. There's one lady, dude. This is the rebellion side in me. No, it's like if you don't do anything, you get it like a D. I used to be. Uh, you have to work for an F. You know, back <laughs> back in when I went to school, everything was college prep, college prep. If you didn't go to college prep, you were dun dun dun, dude. You moved in into the dun 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 classes. <laughs> Remedial. Yeah, and. All the teachers are like, you're so capable of doing this. Every teacher, you know how many times I heard, 
You just you're, they not, do, but, you're not living up to your potential. You're dude, but they didn't understand you. that you had ADD. They weren't teaching you. The and way I you, didn't understand it either. I don't so, think anybody did at that and, time. No, not then. Back then, it was just attitude problem or lazy or <laughs> citizenship problem. Yeah, citizenship problem. <laughs> but I was never mean to teachers. No. And teachers loved me because I would come in. And I would talk to them like a real person, like, hey, what'd you do this weekend? And they would look at me like, you're such a, <laughs> you need to chill out and be like, no, really, what'd you do this weekend? <laughs> you married? <laughs> you single? Hey, what'd they didn't know how much you knew already. You were really <laughs> advanced in some I, areas. I do that to some of the single guys. No, the, what'd you do this weekend, man? You're single, right? Don't give me that crap. At work? Yeah, you no, know, at school, uh, in high school. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I kid you not. I, I I had a great high school. Los Amigos was an awesome high school. I knew everybody there. Everybody knew each other there. Was I popular? Eh, yeah, kind of. I, I would say that I knew everybody and fit into all different types of groups. I didn't just sit with one social group. Um, but at the end of my four years, dude, uh, we went on a trip, a senior trip to Cancun, dude. Oh, we went to Cancun, too. Went with our teachers? You're, did you go with your teachers? No, we went alone. Those teachers are... Crazy? <laughs> dude. Uh, that's a little crazy, I don't, even, dude. I don't even think that happens anymore. I don't think it does either, but <laughs> because of that I'm reason... Actually, I was actually probably... We were probably one of the last generations that got to go to those trips. Yeah, it was I like, don't know. It was, a, it was a senior trip. Yeah, we, senior we'd trip. raise money, and then you'd buy your ticket, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But it was like a package deal yeah, where package deal. they There's give you like blast, bracelets dude. and all this stuff. Oh, so. it was Drink fest. It was just partying. Party. And then you go out, like during the day, you'd go on the excursions and yep. stuff, but you're pretty much just hanging out with everybody you graduated with. Yeah, dude. And there was like one time I ended up in. Uh... I almost killed myself on a scooter. Dude, <laughs> the Cancun trip. Really? Yeah. So we went, to, so we wanted to cruise the, you know, well, Cancun is awesome, dude. It's beautiful. And you can literally just ride because it's like a, I mean, there's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's a very small area, you know? So we were like, hey, let's go get some scooters and we'll ride around. We thought it was a great idea. It was one of the worst ideas ever, dude. Don't ever. <laughs> you go to Cancun, don't ever rent any scooters, dude. You're going to kill yourself. Yeah. Um, People drive crazy. Not dude. only that, but they don't have insurance and stuff. If, no, you, no, if no, something no. happens to the scooter, you're responsible. Oh, really? They don't explain that. And you're th- you're coming from the United States thinking, hey, man. Uh, then we, you're we, thrown in jail and you don't dude, even realize. Dude, well, because, I mean, like I said, you're coming from the United States thinking that every vehicle you get on has insurance and you're covered. If you get in an accident, well, all right. Well, especially if you rent it. As dude. long as you don't kill someone, yeah, yeah. then whatever. It's material things. It'll get fixed. No big deal. No, not so much in Mexico, dude. People forget Cancun is Mexico. <laughs> like, so I rented this thing and then, so they keep your ID. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's. Okay, it seems legit. You keep your ID, and uh, you pay the money to rent it, and then you sign some documents, whatever. I don't even know what was on there. Signed it. If you crash it, you, you're... Well, I didn't read the fine print. <laughs> but literally, I get on. They turn it on. They tell me, well, this is that, blah, 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 right? And then my buddy's two other scooters, right? So it's three of us. And um, so I'm going to exit and then make a right, and then just go cruising, right? We're going to cruise. As soon as I turn, I'm turning, there's a bus coming. And it's not coming fast, but I try to kind of, you know, pull back on the throttle a little bit to move faster because it's a bus and I'm in a scooter. I hit it a little too hard. Like, I just, I thought the throttle, I, th- I just figured it's a scooter, dude. Like, how much power can this have? The scooter had a lot of power. <laughs> yeah, scooters do have a, <laughs> a kick to lot them. of power, yeah, dude. More than so, people think. Yeah, so I happen. hit it and then just, like, it just took off, dude. And I was like, whoa. And, and, um, and so, my my hand, instead of releasing because it was going too fast, I tightened it and I pulled back even harder. Yeah, that's what happens when you're trying to control. It. So I put one foot down, okay, one foot down. You wiped out. And uh, the scooter flew like so. Okay, imagine me like literally on the seat. I put one foot down and I gunned it and I felt like I was gonna fall and I felt like I was gonna fall. And instead of releasing it, I tightened it more. I gunned it even harder. So my foot's down. The back of the tire just flies around. And like I was able to hold the scooter, and then it just flies off. Like it just <laughs> like it, the the back tire hit the ground and flew off, and the scooter just goes and just scrapes all the way down. All the cars stop. Luckily, that bus was going slow enough where it stopped. I didn't get hurt or anything, but I got freaked out. I was oh, in the middle yeah. of the street. I'm freaking out. Scooter down the, it slid down the street, and the guy saw the whole thing. 
the guy's like, there's no hiding it. Like, I couldn't even take it back and act like, oh, well, I don't know, that was there or whatever, you know? Or have nobody check the scooter. Mm. They saw it happen. So literally two minutes, three minutes into the tr- into the thing. I already had paid. I go, they come out, they pick it up, and it, it's it's fine. It just has some scratches and stuff on the like on the yeah, side or whatever. Don't bond over that crap. And- yeah, it's not a big, honestly, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. Like, nobody got hurt. The, the thing just got scratched up. We take it back to the parking lot, and they're like, are you okay, whatever. No, I'm fine, you know, it's cool. I was like, yeah, you know what? Forget it. Just keep the money. I, I'm good. And they're like, oh, like I, I was like, just, just give me back my license. Keep the money. I'm not gonna go on the ride. Like I'm freaked out now. I don't want to use a scooter. And they're like, oh, well, actually, you know that that See was that, a, that was kind of a serious uh, accident. We gotta send it to our mechanic. He's gotta check the whole the whole scooter. Yeah, this is I was your like, bike. Oh, dude, this is your bike. Like, I was like, hold on a second. I know where this is going. I was like, all right, I need my I need my ID back because I'm in a different country. I have nothing else to show yeah. that that's me or whatever. And I don't know what you guys are gonna do with this ID. And then it starts getting heated. You don't want to give me my ID back. And then and they're like, well, you know, um, it's either we give you your ID back and you give us two hundred dollars. That way, whatever is Did broken, you pay him? they're like, well, that way, whatever is broken gets covered. And if it's not covered, it'll be our fault. We'll we'll go ahead and, and cover the yeah, difference. Yeah, they just wanted to. Yeah, they're trying to, dude, to extort. They're trying to give me get me to pay. You know, and um, Did you say you know who my dad is. Long story short. <laughs> Long story short, came back with his leather jacket. <laughs> long story short, uh, they keep my ID. They don't want to release it, and I don't want to pay them the two hundred dollars. I'm like, no, dude, dude I want, come on, man. There's some scratches on it. So you guys literally saw it happen. I said that there's nothing like fun. Uh, so anyways, so I walk away. I said, all right. I'll, he goes, I'll give you a call, or no? He says, uh, come back in like an hour. The mechanic will come check it out. I come back in an hour with my buddies, right? And um, and they're like, oh, well, you know, unfortunately. Uh, the fork and the they made some stupid thing up. It's bent, and in order to get this part, uh, it costs like X amount of dollars. He's like, "You have a choice. You can wait for us to fix it." I'm like, "Dude, I'm only here for a senior trip. I don't live here." Yeah, you know. And then we can give you a bill, or you can pay us two hundred dollars. Guess what I had to do? Two hundred. Got my ID back. You're lucky you paid two hundred. Never again, dude. Yeah. I'll never ever. I don't do anything on trips like that. Nope. No, nothing like that, dude. Learned my lesson. Uh, yeah. No, no. I've done. So- Stupid crap like that before too, yeah. but I never. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been in Baja plenty of times where they're like, "Oh yeah, just two hundred and we'll." Take you actually got to be careful when you're traveling, depending on where you travel to. Not just to Mexico, to anywhere. Like you got to wherever you travel, you got to know. And this is part of self defense. You got to know um, what the rules are, because we're playing by different rules when we're coming from the states and going to other countries because they don't work the dude, same way we do. Want to know don't. a good one? And you can get into some trouble, dude. So go ahead. I went down to. Uh, Ensenada for the weekend with some buddies and uh, we would go down there all the time we'd go down there all the time it was nothing back in 80s and 90s yeah. up and back all the time and I was down there and I had like 500 bucks on me we were going to spend the weekend there and I was like oh shit just drinking and you know you go into like some of the bars and they open up an area and yeah. it's close to the street and yeah. then I took one step out of the onto the, like the street area and I had a beer. I was like messing around with some friends that were pushing me and I was drinking a beer. They said I was drunk in public and in the uh, in the street, grabbed me and threw me in the paddy wagon, dude. <laughs> grabbed me yeah. out of the bar and threw me in the paddy wagon. I had no clue what was going on. You were probably acting a fool. No, I, well, maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember, quite honestly. I don't remember. I was drunk. <laughs> I was drunk. I, but I got real sober real quick yeah. when I got thrown in there. Yeah. And the first thing I remember my buddy hey, telling dude, me. don't mess around out there. Dude. I remember my buddy telling me, dude, hide your money. As he was going, he was like, hide your money. Oh. He's like, he's like, give me your wallet or, you know, whatever. And I didn't want to give him my, I took out my ID and I left a hundred bucks in there. I still had 300 on me. I did, and I was like in my pocket and I was like, you know what I did, dude? They never checked my, I had uh, sandals on. I'd slid it under my shoe or in my shoe. I had put a little like, I dug like when I was in the paddy wagon with everybody, nobody could tell what I was doing with my shoe and I ripped a little hole in my, my uh, sandal. So when I was walking, you could never tell. But I was my money was in the sandal, or they would have took my money, dude. They just let me there. Oh, like they didn't take your sandals. So they took me to jail, processed me, and my friends could not find me, dude. Could not find me. I was in there for four hours. Oh. 
while I was in there, there's a guy in there. He's like, dude, I'm from Orange County. I've been in here for a month. What? Uh, can, when you go back, can, if I get something right down, what did he do? You, I don't know. Probably something stupid. A month? Dude. Yeah. In probably, a Mexican jail? Probably drugs, dude. If you're doing something like that. A Mexican jail? You know, he said, nobody knows I'm here. Dude. You know, uh, and he's like, they're just waiting for somebody to come here and pay me out. You know, do you have money? I was like, dude, I don't got that kind of money. I was like, I'm waiting for my friends. And I told you my buddy Walter lived there at the time. Finally, I keep so hearing. he probably knew how the whole thing yeah, worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I finally, dude, they had been calling my name. But because I don't know Spanish, dude, they were calling me Geraldo, dude. <laughs> and and uh, Geraldo Hernandez, Geraldo Hernandez. And, I, and I, they'd, been looking, they'd been looking at me like, no. He's not answering. It's not him. Like, and then finally my buddy Walter was like, in Spanish, was telling him, no, you motherfucker. You need to walk me back there. I know he's here. This is where you're, oh. I, the bus is here. I know he's here. And he walks here. Geraldo. <laughs> he, he walks in and he looks. He goes, that's him right there. And he's all, Gary, what are you doing? And I was like, they never called my name, dude. And he was like, we've been calling you for two hours. And you're like, dude, no, you haven't. I was like, no, you haven't. And they were like trying to charge. He's like, how much money do you have? Because that was heated. Like yeah, it's yeah. like they're bad. He's like, how much money do you have on you? I said, I gave you that hundred. And he's like, the head officer took me out to the front with him. He's like, well, it's usually three hundred dollars. He was drinking in public. They would have taken the rest of your money. Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. And he goes, he goes, listen, he's here with me on the weekend. I live here. Here's his hundred. This is his money. Here's his ID. Dude, so I have a record in in uh, Ensenada, and yeah, I was in there for five hours. You want to hear a better one? Uh, how long were you in there? Oh, dude, so uh, Cancun. Uh, uh, Cancun, please, dude, dude. Listen, I'll never go to Cancun again. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so I was there on a trip, okay, and uh, it's one of those all-inclusive trips. It's actually a beautiful place we stayed at, man. Like sick, okay. Uh, Gloria's not, she doesn't stay up late. Like, Gloria, like, goes to sleep real early, um, gets up real early, but goes to sleep early. So it was, like, 9, 9.30, and she's like, you know what, I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to go to sleep. You don't have to leave that place. Oh, I think you were telling me to start. You don't morning. have to leave that place because it's, um, it's, it's all inclusive. Yeah. Like, you're hungry, you go get something to eat. You, you're thirsty, you go get something to drink. If you want to have a, a, a stiff drink, a light drink, a mixed drink, a whatever you want, dude, it's all right there. All you got to do is ask. Yeah. You know? And it's a beautiful place, man. Um, so I decide they have some like the, there's like an area where they have uh, live music and I go sit there and the music was awesome dude like it was just great I love live music man especially in that type Same of here. setting and yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. the, the ambiance they had plants they do just like beautiful plants everywhere you know I love plants and yeah. just exotic like kind of like area you're sitting at water, you can hear the water you could see the ocean um the, the the beaches there are special, dude, in Cancun. Like, it's sick, dude. The white sands. It, yeah, uh, yeah it's special. The water's yeah, so clear. Beautiful, it's dude. Even at night, yeah. it looks blue. It you illuminates. Can see the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. something about it, dude. I don't know. It's magical. Anyways, so where I'm sitting, there's live music. There's this beautiful view, all this stuff. So I'm, like, ordering drinks, whatever. It's inclusive. It's all included, right? It's all, like, top shelf, everything, whatever, all inclusive. And so I'm, like, I'm having some drinks, watching the thing. And then I see... Um, uh, three people that sit next. So let's say this is where I'm sitting. I'm sitting by myself and watching whatever. Um, in that same place, my room is there. It's, I'm like on the like 20th floor. I could see my room from where I'm sitting. It's all open. It's beautiful, dude. And um, I see uh, like uh, three people sit down on the table next to me. And they seem to be having fun. They seem like cool people. And most people that are there are cool people because it's yeah, an all-inclusive an thing. And it's, like, a it's a resort. And yeah. it's like family stuff or it's like honeymooners or friends that are close friends right. it's, it's just something where it's not just like random crappy people like, yeah you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. so they sit there and they said hi to me as they were sitting down and stuff i said hi to them whatever you know minding our own business and then like the music's getting good and then they put like like uh like dancing music like uh uh like sodora de la vita and stuff it was like oh dude this is cool man like like cumbias you know yeah, yeah, yeah. there's people dancing and stuff and they're dancing and they could do they were getting down i was like dude these guys know how to dance or whatever right and um uh uh, so then they start talking to me and stuff, and they're, they're being real friendly. And then uh, one of the so one of the girls kind of like sits like next to me, and then the guy sits at the end of the table. And there's only like a small space in between every table, right? So they just got kind of a little closer. And then the dude, the the third guy or the third person, 
instead of sitting like at the chair that's on that side, he comes and sit, uh, sits at the chair next to me. Oh, damn, they're pulling it. So I'm like, I, you know, I just felt a little uncomfortable about that. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously, like we know, I mean, we train people uh, in this stuff, you know? And I, I was like, nah, this is, this, is not, this is not okay, you know? And then like I'm about to get up because I was just going to move. I was going to act like I was going to go get something, just move out of the way and just kind of, yeah, yeah. you know, just kind of move, but get myself out of the situation. And then one of the guys grabs my, my arm, but like not hard, but goes, hey, 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 hold on a second. I want to ask you something. And I'm like, I'm like, what's up, dude? I was like, hey, man. Like, you know, like don't, like, like, don't, don't grab, my, piece of don't grab my arm like that. You know what you I mean? Want a little, and, you know, and these guys have been dancing with the girls the whole time and, and like doing the thing, you know? And then, um, do you think you're a fee fee or what? One of the, one of the, so, so, so he goes, I don't know. And he's like, I'm sorry, man. He's like, I just, just sit down, man. Like, you know, like, let's have a drink. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nah, I'm good, man. You know, I'm good. And then the other guy gets up and then he goes, hey, man, he told you to sit down and have a drink. Like, a little bit more aggressive, you know? And I was like, what is going on right now? And I'm like, no, nah, I'm good, man. But now I'm more serious. Now, like at first I was like, hey, man, like, like kind of smiling and laughing about it. You know, because I figured they were drinking or whatever. So I just kind of, you know, kind of being passive about it. But then when the other guy kind of stood up, like he did kind of like a half, like standing from his seat. And he goes, hey, he told you to have a drink with them. Then I was like, nah, man, I'm good. Like I, I was stern about it. Yeah. And then he gets up completely up and his friend gets completely up. And then his friend goes to grab my shoulder. And he goes, he goes, you're going to, dude, you're not going to believe what he told me. He goes, you're going to suck blah, blah, blah off, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, dude, I didn't even, what? I didn't even wait. I didn't even wait. Uh, Palm the guy in the face. I grabbed my shoulder and kicked the other guy in the groin, fell to the ground. I just ran out. Oh, shit. Yep. It was like instant, dude. Like as soon as he went from my shoulder, like he grabbed my shirt and he said that you're going to do this, where well, boom, hit him in the face. He's like, you're like the Mexican John Wick. And the other guy kicked him in the nuts. <laughs> he, did, he was not expecting that, dude. That's a little, that's a little freaky. Kicked dude. him in the nuts, fell, and this is in the place, dude. And so you know what I did? I went over to the front desk, reported it right away, and uh, as I'm reporting it, um, the lady goes, oh, you know what? Because she's like asking me, and I speak Spanish fluently, and I'm telling her, this is what happened, dude. They're still there. I was like, you need, you need to send someone because I'm not a small guy. I know how to defend myself. Like, they're, they're going to do that to someone, and that's going to be bad news because it's two of them, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so she's, like, like, trying to write, like, take the report. She's asking me in Spanish. I'm telling her. And she goes, you know what? I think, um, I, think I have to call my, my general manager. So she stops when I told her what they said and stuff. Damn. They might have been a couple, like, uh, narcos, too, uh, that are. No, dude. These people, no, no. Because you know what they say about those places now, why they're so safe, right? Yeah, yeah, I, that, I do know. That, they, they have their money invested there. In the, yeah, their money's invested. But this is where I'm getting at, so I'll tell you how that ties in. Yeah. So she goes, I think I have to tell my general manager about this. And I'm like, okay, sure, I'll talk to your general manager. They go get him, and that, when she was writing, she goes, like, pushes aside. General manager comes, and then and he goes, go ahead and take that over there. They, they completely get rid of the paper. I saw that. I saw that they get, I was like, uh... He goes, you wanted to make a report about something? I said, yeah, this is what happened. I say it real quick. The guys are still there. If you guys hurry up, the, like if you get your security, go there. Or you can check the camera. There's cameras everywhere, dude. I was like, if you just check your cameras, you'll see what happened. Blah, blah, blah. He's like, um, unfortunately, we don't have the cameras up at this time. Uh, so we, we, you know, we, we, can't, we, we can't make that report. And you said that, how did you get away? You, you said you hit somebody? And I was like, wait a minute, What? They're like, well, you said that you hit someone in the face and you kicked someone in the groin and then you ran to the front to report it. He's like, you know, that's that's an issue. If you're hitting people that are staying here, uh, we're going to have to question you about it. And so he just like turned this whole thing around, dude, like trying to say that I was the person that assaulted someone. Did, yeah. they, go, Did they hit you? I said, well, he grabbed my shirt from my shoulder. I said, and I defended myself. And he goes, well, you know, not, you can't do that here. You can't hit people that are staying here. And I was like, wait a minute. I was like, listen, I need to, I need to, I'm going to go ahead and, and make a phone call. I'm going to go ahead and call the, the, the consulate and just report it to them. And then they can send a police officer and I can make the report and then we're good. And then, uh, so I go to grab, cause there's a, there's phones on the, it's like a nice place. There's phones on the top and I just grab it. And then he disconnects the cord, disconnects the cord, dude. 
doesn't want me to report this. So I've heard this. This is a doesn't thing. want me to report yeah, it. There's a thing about this. It does not want me to report it. And I'm like, how come? So now I asked him straight up in Spanish. I go, why don't you want me to rec- re- report this? And uh, he's like, well, you know, first off, we have to see what happened. And if what you're telling me is true, that means that you hit someone, you assaulted somebody. And I was like, I was like, listen, this is, this, I don't feel comfortable with this conversation. He's like, well, you know what? We're going to have to uh, investigate this further. I'm going to call the, I'm going to call the uh, police, federal police comes or the state police comes. And dude, they're all in it. They're like, all of them are in it. They, they actually take me from the hotel. Oh, shit. Yeah. The guy comes and the guy goes, what's the issue? And the, the officer, honestly, like he, he wasn't a jerk or anything. He was just like, well, what's the issue? What's going on? And I explained to him. So that was the third time I'm explaining what happened. And then he goes, okay, so you're, you're safe? You're good? And I said, yeah, I'm good. I'm just trying to make a report. When I said that, I'm trying to make a report, you know, to make sure that it doesn't happen again to anybody else or whatever. He goes, he goes oh, entonces si vamos a tener un problema. Oh, now we, that will be an issue. Oh, right, shit. and then he turns around and he asks the general manager. He goes, um, "What do you want me to do with him?" And he goes, "Take him." And then I'm like, "What? Like, I'm reporting the crime. I'm I'm re- I'm here with my family. I'm reporting the crime. I'm in this place. I paid money to be here. It's a five star place. Like, why why can't I not report this crime?" And then the guy's like, "Well, listen, you're gonna have to talk to someone later. You can talk to a lawyer." And he goes, "I'm gonna have to take you." He goes, "I don't have to handcuff you." He's like, but I don't want to have issues. Are you going to give me issues? I'm like, dude, I'm not going to give you issues. What I'm having an issue with is with the management right now. I can't report a crime. And so anyways, long story short, he puts the cuffs on me. He puts them in the front like this, right? And I let him do it. I'm not going to fight the the cop or whatever. And then they're taking me in the middle of the night. Yeah, it was like uh, How much did that cost you? It was like midnight. So we go down the street and I'm like, well, well, where's this jail at? Or where are you taking me? Oh, you're still going to suck off what's this? Seriously, dude, I don't know what's going on. Honestly, at this point, I'm like, but I'm, but I know, I know enough where I feel comfortable. Where I'm like, what what's going on right now is not cool. It's not, no, it's dude, not straight. Scary, and and just because I'm pissed off about it, because yeah. they're they're they don't want me to report this. Imagine how much stuff happens. Maybe that's all they're waiting for that, you to that, say. That, that, imagine how much stuff happens that they don't report yeah. because it, it's a tourist area. They want people to continue going rapes, assaults. So uh, that's what's uh, really burglary, big there. Like all that stuff yeah. happens all the time, and they don't want you to report it. They want you to feel like everything is cool, everything's no problem. Look at our look at our reports. Look, our crime is down. It's perfect here. You could come here with your family, feel safe. You could go out at night. You could go to the beach at night because it's a private beach and feel safe. <coughs> oh, shit, dude. Yeah. There's stuff going on all the time. All the time. And dude. when you try to report it, that's how they snuff you. That's what they say uh, in Cancun. Is that's why. It's nobody goes there yep. anymore because, uh, and My, that's why all the narcos guys go there with their families and hang out dude. and do all that. But it's been on 2020, and like, like all this. I stuff. was just about to say that. Yeah. So we get to, so, okay, so just let me finish that part. So I get to the jail and I talk to the, there's a judge there. It's weird how they have a setup. There's an actual judge there. I talk to the judge, tell him what's going on. He goes, listen, the report that I have is that you were being aggressive, that you hit somebody in the hotel room, and that's why you're here. I'm like, dude. How did I go from being a victim reporting a crime to them saying that I'm the one that hit someone that's staying yeah. there and that I'm here for that? And the judge doesn't know. I mean, it's not the judge's yeah, fault. He yeah. doesn't know. He's going based on the report that they gave him. So he goes, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to hold you to the morning and then we'll release you back. He's like, that's the least I can do. You know, because he asked me who I was traveling with. And I told him, dude, I'm here with my wife. Like, my parents are here. Like, my, I told him, like, it was a family trip, you know? I'm like, dude, I'm not. They don't even know I'm here. No, they, uh, my, yeah, and I'm not out here partying. Like, it's it's a family trip. And so he's like, all right, listen, this is what I'm going to do. So you get back to your family, just wait till the morning, and then I'll write you off and you get out. So long story short, I get out, right? But I'm trying to explain this to Gloria. I'm trying to explain because I'm pissed that I couldn't make a report about these guys. Like, it's just, it's just, what not, did Gloria say? It's not okay. You know what I mean? No, it's not. Well, they were dude. pissed at me too because they're like, oh, well, what were you doing up so late? Why did you stay up? I'm yeah. like, dude, it's a resort. Like, it's a, <laughs> not it's just, let, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, okay, maybe I shouldn't have stayed out that late. Maybe I shouldn't. Okay. I accept that. I, I completely accept that. <laughs> right. I should have gone to sleep at 11 or 12 or lesson whatever. Learned, you know? yeah, lesson okay, learned. Yeah. Lesson learned. But that still doesn't yeah, take away right. the fact that I was going to be assaulted. I didn't allow it. Right. Someone got their butt kicked. Two people did, and and that's good because I defended myself. 
but there's still something very wrong with that. They're making it seem like it's a family atmosphere. You're all safe and you're not. What if it was the other way around? What if I went to sleep and Gloria was the one that stayed having some drinks? Oh, that could have been like, really bad. That could have been extremely bad. It could have been bad for anybody. That's... And, and what's worse is that what if she went to go make the report and they and they treated her the same way? Oh, yeah. No, you can't make that report. Well, and that's probably what ha- Like you said, that Imagine the stuff ha- that happens yeah, out there, dude. All the time. Imagine dude. the stuff that happens out there and, and nobody can make a report. Or they say, oh, no, you were drinking so or you were partying and they just brush people off. There's two things that could have happened there, too. You, if you didn't go and get released and at least that happened and you decided you kick these two people's butt and you go up to the room, I heard this also, and you don't, you just go back. Yeah. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, you don't report it. You don't report it. Come in the morning, now you got a real problem, yep. dude. Why didn't you report this? Yeah, yeah exactly. Right? Like, so. Because anyway. the judge probably was like, we scared him enough. So then dude. check this out. So then a week later, no joke, 2020. Really? There's a report about all the stuff that's going on in Cancun. Yeah. In, in those type of places where you prepay and everything's all covered and stuff. Dude, they started talking about like all the stuff that happens, like rapes, uh, people missing. Uh, attacks, uh, like people being uh, assaulted and stuff, and that the reports are all being. There and was that, like I, dude, I was so like I felt vindicated, dude. Like I felt like validated. There was like three or four at one time, probably around the same time, man, of where uh, honeymooners went and they never came back, or uh, a honeymooner went with there's his wife, like you said, and the wife went out to get ice, never came back. Or there was a there was a, on the 2020 they talked about uh, even were, young men there, there was, was I think like 11 bodies found at the beach yeah and what they did is that they were trying the the resorts because it was on the private side of the resorts they were trying to uh, like hide that to not get out to the news yeah. and stuff because it would affect their business and they were actually trying to remove the bodies and put them somewhere else and say that that's where they were at and they got caught doing it dude and that was all part of that report and I showed Gloria dude I was like listen not to bring old stuff back but. I said, I need you to see this. And she, she read it, and then she saw the clip and stuff, and she's like, she goes like, oh, I'm sorry, babe. Like, she goes, she's like, yeah, there's obviously something something there. And I was just like, listen, I get it. Like, I, it was my bad for staying up, being out there, having some extra drinks, listening to them. But it doesn't take away that I was in a place where so, I thought I was safe, and I had to defend myself, and they wouldn't take my report. Like, that's not cool. Did you, like, wink at the guy or something? Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, dude. I think that they might have. I, mean, I think that they might have uh, figured it's two guys. They were having some drinks. Maybe they felt a little bit more like, like, uh, like they had the liquid courage, you know. And they probably thought that I was gonna be scared or something. If they even chose the wrong person, man, for that. They could have even dabbed your drink a little bit, and you yeah, would have been. Yeah, dude. You don't know. Dude. You would have been mean, like on some porn yeah, somewhere. Yeah, but yeah, no. I, uh, I, I, yeah, the guy went from my from from my shirt. You know, like it just kind of started escalating as I was backing up. I see you like this. Boom. What's up, Juan? Yeah. No, man. Yeah. And. uh, (laughs) I didn't know you swung it. Dude, you know, and and it it was it was frustrating. Damn, I know you're feeling really serious right now, but I'm trying to like break it down. (laughs) Nah, it was it was just frustrating, dude. Because imagine being in another country. And not having any control over that, dude. It, was, it wasn't cool. So Stories what, like that just it's scary, are dude. Like, scary, dude. It's scary. Because, I mean... Literally, look. What if what if that was like our wives? Instead of me being in that, what if it was one of our wives getting assaulted or something? And she's trying to wives report it. Wives or daughter, you know? Yeah, or, and they're trying to report it. And, and they're like, oh, no, you can't report that. Yeah. Let's go ahead and call the cops. Oh, you, you hit somebody? Did you say you had a... Hit someone? Yeah, and that's how they dig it out. Now, it's, now it becomes a he said, she said, yeah, and like, all kinds of... And not only that, but then why don't you check your cameras? Dude, this could be easily solved. Just check your camera. Look, there's cameras right there, right now. And he's like, oh, unfortunately, they're they're uh, not operational right now. That pissed me off, dude. I was so pissed. Yeah, they probably would have been operational if you would have ran to your room and those guys yeah. came up and... Yeah, and then they would have said, hey, you need to kick down some and money. You, and you ran. Yeah, unless you, yep, yeah. you uh, want to... Yeah, that's that's the problem, Mexico, man. It's such a great place. There's so many cool things, but it's just gotten so overrun with yeah, all, all sucks, kinds dude. of yeah. It sucks. It's almost like evil, dude. <laughs> like some of the stuff that happens down there right now. And hopefully it changes one day because I'd love to go back. To yeah. So too. the rules when you're traveling, for in regards to self defense, are different. Don't play by the rules that you would play by here in the states. You have to understand that if you choose a place to go and travel to, it's your responsibility. Your life and your safety is your responsibility. And you're not entitled to what you're entitled to here in the United States, period. Be aware of that. That's part of self-defense, knowing where you're traveling, knowing what to expect, and knowing the laws there. 
and and knowing the streets is even better. Oh yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you um, in one of our backpacking trips with my brother, um, in one of my backpacking trips with my brother, uh, Charlois in uh, in uh, uh, what's it? Oh, geez, where was that? Charlois, I believe, is in Belgium. Yes. Dang. Um, anyways, that's where we were at. And Charlois, uh, uh, that city, got bombarded in World War II quite a bit. They, there was like an industrial area uh, where they were making a lot of the artillery. Oh, uh, so and, it was one of the, uh, in, what is it, military yeah, there industrial were, areas? Yeah, there was, a, it was an industrial area that... that There's they, a lot of places like that in They Europe. converted to making artillery yeah. and a bunch of stuff for war, right? So obviously that area got bombed hard when they got bombed because it's a strategic point to get rid of artillery and stuff right, like that, right? 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 Uh, and it happened um, to be such a big industrial area that they never rebuilt. Like so, oh, wow. so as we're going on the train, so my brother and I, we have our big old backpacks, and we're arriving, and we're like, like it starts looking different, right? So like you have like farmland and everything, and then you start getting into the city, and the city looks really gothic. It's an old city. It's a really old city, and it starts looking really like gothic, like like buildings, you know, and stuff. And then you're like, wow, this is this is interesting. This is kind of cool like it's very different, different. You're obviously really old city and and uh and you're like uh, it just looks darker and kind of older and it's yeah it's gothic in the way that it's uh, the architecture but there's something about it it's just like a little dirtier like you, you can tell that it hasn't been upkept right as you go deeper into the city in the train you start seeing buildings with holes in them and then you start seeing like it's just never rebuilt really? where the bomb landed that's and crazy. how it ended that's how it still looks that's crazy it's super crazy the reason why we were in that city is because there was a soccer game, Germany versus uh, England. And if you know anything about soccer, especially in the Euro Cup, Germany versus England, for sure there's going to be riots because you got hooligans on both sides. Yeah. So you got the Eng- the English that are just like... So you guys are going there for some trouble, huh? No, we were, we were going there... We were going there to go experience a soccer game in a Euro Cup in Europe. And and we love soccer, so we thought that that would be amazing to go. Like, how could you pass that up? England versus, you know what I mean? Like, versus Germany? Dude, sick. But there's a reason why they put it in Charlois. Because they figured if they riot and then there's these fights and all this. Because when they riot out there, when there's soccer fights, it's not like a handful of people. The whole stadium, it just... Goes. I mean, it's nuts. And, and if, Have you seen it? Go on YouTube. Anybody who's and look up some of these soccer fights, dude. They're pretty they're gnarly. Gnarly, dude. crazy, nuts. Like they separate in the fans, and they, like, all of a it's sudden nuts. they like. It's nuts. <laughs> and so they scheduled it in Charleroi because Charleroi is already bombed, and it's a city that hasn't been. But re- there's not much for them to really mess up. You know what I mean? And uh, so that's why they put it out there. So you say you've been to Italy. Have you seen that? Uh, Netflix. I'm a big Netflix documentary, docu series guy. Um, there's one called Fight Game or something game where in Italy it's a year tradition where it's basically like a rugby game, but it's full. Oh yeah, they fight, dude. MMA full contact. like contact. Yeah, I saw that. Dude. I saw a clip of it. Actually, one of our old students. Um, one of the mom of the old students sent and sent to me. She goes, Mr. Abel, I think you'll like this. Check it out. And uh, I saw it. I'm like, oh, my God. This yeah. is nuts. And it's happened for like they have hundreds no, of years. Dude, they have no gear on. Nothing. And just, all they do is train just, all year on just to do this one game. So there's this ball, right? It's like a rugby thing. Yeah. But at some point, they're not even paying attention to the ball. They're just brawling, dude. Well, that's what they say. You take out as many people as you can. Yeah. You know, one guy will just score. But they'll be like, okay. Wham! Wham yep. If you're not looking at it, it's and then nuts. they always have like a couple small guys, a couple <laughs> big guys. I watched this the other day. And it's day. like sand. Yeah. So these guys are in incredible shape. No, they're like, yeah. They're like, look like they're fit to fight. Like, yeah, legit. Legitimately yeah. like fighters, dude. And they just got like some like colors on them tied to their arms and legs. And they and stuff. march down the street and they don't play for money, dude. No, nothing. They play for a cow. <laughs> because a hundred years ago, that was like to get a, well, a cow would be would feed so many. Well, people. I think that the teams represent a certain area of yeah. the cities or stuff, and it's like bragging rights. It's bragging rights, and, and that's you, all it is. And you grow up like yeah. 
This like, is... I want to grow up there. So some of these guys, like, I had my kid here, yeah. so when he grows up, he'll be a part yeah, of that city. Yeah, it's nuts, and... dude. It's so nuts. Yeah, so that kind of reminded me of that. So, so as we're getting off the train, right, to go and, and, and see where we're going to stay and to kind of plan out how we're going to go watch this, this game and all that, where the entrance is at, so that by the time it's there, we know where everything's at and we feel comfortable, right? So we get off. We're the only two idiots getting off with our freaking frame backpacks. So we stand out like a sore thumb, dude. Like two, yeah. two, two guys, two young kids walking off the train. There's nobody else on the train. Like we're getting off by ourselves because by that time, nobody's going to be there. The only people that are there are going to be there for that game. That's it, you know? So we get off the train and it's literally just him and I and like a handful of other people and we look, we stick out like a sore thumb. As we're walking, like down the city, we're like looking around and we're like, where is everybody? Like, where, what's going on? Like, why? this place looks like it's dead. And the people that are there, have you ever watched The Hills Have Eyes? Yeah. Straight up, dude. I, they look funny. People missing teeth. Their clothes look <laughs> raggedy. Because that's probably all they do um, is go. The streets are cobblestone, which is usually beautiful. Like Prague is beautiful, cobblestone streets and all that. But these cobblestones have been beat up, dark, dirty. Uh, it's just, it was a bad place, dude. Bad, bad place. As soon as we get to the middle, so, so I say that this is the train station. This is the center of the plaza. We get off, we walk like this much, and we're like, hey, dude, do you really want to stay here? Like, I get why we're here, and it's like a once-in-a-lifetime thing to get tickets to Germany uh, versus England. But, dude, are we safe? Yeah. Like, straight up. Like, my brother and I, we're not, dude, we're, by, we're not wussies. Like, straight up. Like, my brother and I are not wussies. Like, we we understand the streets somewhat, you know, and we're like, we're not safe here, dude. Like, we, Well, and we, that's part of growing up knowing the streets Yeah, a bit. my brother made an executive decision. He's like, we're not safe here. He's yeah. like, you know what? These tickets, as hard as it was to, to get them, they're impossible to get. Like, they're, they're, Ozzy got them through a friend that has connections and stuff. But, and we're like, dude, but we're not going to go to this game. Like, it's impossible to get these tickets. And he's like, we're not safe. He's, he's like, we're not safe. Let's yeah, get back if on. You're so, sticking out like a sore thumb. No, yeah. We're not safe. And, and so, uh, so we try to make it, we're, so we're making it back to the train station. As we're walking back, uh, the same people that were kind of giving us looks and stuff, some of them aren't there anymore. And this has happened within a 15 to 20 minute kind of uh, time span. It just something wasn't right. Something wasn't right. So we get, we're waiting for, we're on the platform, waiting for the train that goes back to where we came from to show up, right? And we're getting a little antsy. Sun's coming down. And, uh, Train finally arrives, and we're like, "All right, thank God, we're good. Get on the train, and that's it. We'll just we'll sit, rest a little, take a little nap, and then we'll go back to where we're we're going, right?" Uh, and uh, so we get on the train, and we get on the train, and we pick some seats, and we always do it strategically when we're on the train, right? So we can protect our stuff and protect each other. So one would sit facing one way, one would fit, uh, sit uh, facing the opposite way. So I, we both got each other's backs, and vision, and uh, so we did. And we noticed that two other people got on the train. And one of them was was uh, younger than the other, but they were both young. One of them was maybe 35. So I'm talking to me. I was 18, you know, so my brother's four, four years difference. So we're young too. But 35 compared to an 18-year-old, I mean, there is some difference. Like, it's like a, sure. it's a grown it's man. grown man. Yeah, it's a grown man, and I'm still kind There's of There's a difference. There's yeah, a difference. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so the other guy was a little younger, but he's still older than us, right? So it's two older guys, and one of them was a big dude, like, um, like picture, like picture, like Mr. AJ, um, but just like wearing a real tight shirt, looking like a French guy, like just <laughs> like, it's just, oui. like he had, he actually had a white shirt with black stripes on it. Damn. Yeah, like he's like straight up, and um, and then the other dude was a small dude. That guy was nothing, but but still two guys that we that weren't even on the platform where we were getting on. So. They got on quick, is what I'm trying to say. And then so my brother and I, we both saw it. We saw it. When we got on, they got on, and they got on to the same uh, like cart. cart. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so my brother just went like that, and I, and I I got it. I was like, I got it. And then um, each train cart has like a, a, a axe like that's that big in a glass case. And then so my brother goes, hey, man, you know what? Um, I can't stretch my feet out right here. Let's go sit over there. I knew exactly what he was saying. He was telling me, let's go sit where that glass is at that, because you break it in case of emergency. I was like, yeah, all right, cool. I was like, yeah, I'm all for that. So we go and sit there, and we sit the same way. So he's looking one way, I'm looking the other way. But now we're close to the breaking in case of an emergency where it has a little axe. 
I'm like, dude, we have everything that we own at that moment on our backs in those frame backpacks from passports to money to clothes and shoes. I mean, like that, it's everything you own in, on your back. If you get that took, good luck, you know, um, yeah. you, you, good luck. I mean, you're out there for, for, you know, months at a time. And if you don't have that stuff, you, you can't travel like you're done, you know? Yeah. Um, needless to say, or, or even like, think about it, like, cause we had a, a train pass. That, that train pass gets you everywhere for a certain amount of time. It's already all paid for. Yeah. If you get that taken, you can't travel anymore. Yeah. Or your you're passport. Stuck. You're stuck or, or if you don't have your passport, you can't yeah, cross you can't, from country to country. Yeah. People don't realize that countries are so close. Yeah. Like in the United States, those are countries. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so every time you're going to cross, they have to, they have to like, they have this thing that they like clip on. Yeah. They, they make a little hole in it and they just, it means you're okay. You can be I need to know if you do it all the time. They live in uh, Norway and they go okay, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They just travel yeah. from yeah. country so to country. So it's extremely important that we don't get robbed yeah. because th- that, that'll be it. Like, that's it. We're done. And yeah. we might not even be able to get home at that point, you know? So, um, so, so these guys, they were sitting way in the back. And now it's about 10 minutes into the ride. The bus is, I mean, the train is moving now, going back to the direction where we came from because we want out of Charleroi because we just know that it's not safe. These guys get closer. They, they go like from way in the back to like now halfway to the, to the middle of the cart, of the train cart. And so maybe they're like uh, six to eight seats behind us, right? And we're like, dude, we know. Like, it's we, on. We know it's on. And my brother actually said that. He's like, hey, June. He calls me June. He's like, hey, June. It's on. I was like, fuck, man, I know. Like, I, I was like, I know. Like, we knew. Like, we that, knew that we were going to have to. That's a scary feeling, too. Yeah. Just I, waiting for it to yeah, happen. Yeah, because, I mean, it, it's like, uh, like, I'm not scared to defend myself. I've been in many fights and the way no, we grew up and all that. but it's just anticipation but, but, of yeah, what's anticipation to come. Of it, the, you know and you're I mean? anxious. And, dude, I'm with my brother. I don't yeah, want my brother yeah. to get hurt. Well, and he doesn't want you to get hurt. Exactly. As an older brother, yeah, dude, dude like, we don't, you yeah. don't want to go home going, uh, yeah, I Joan over here is missing an eye because of me. Yeah, you know dude, I mean? and, like, and like, and like, the last thing you want to do is have to defend yourself, you yeah. know, like defend your life or whatever or your belongings on a trip that's supposed to be fun, you know. That's uh, scary, dude. Yeah, so um, there's a couple stops being made. Like every, you know, let's say every 15, 20 minutes, there's a stop made, right? Because there's cities, and then you get off, people get on and off, right, or whatever. Um, since the sun was going down, it's not a very busy time. So unlo- unfortunately for us. I wish there was more people because at least they would see that there's these like two people that might be bothering us real soon, you know, and maybe somebody will step in and say something. Nah, man, no luck. And all these stops that we're making, maybe like four of them so far, there's nobody really coming into our cart, into our train, you know, and, and we're like, damn, all right. And then my brother goes, my brother's smart, dude. He goes, all right, June, this is the plan. I was like, what's up? Because at this point, we're just waiting for something to happen. So he's like, Let's, we got to do something. He's like, all right, this is the plan. He goes, when I get up, you get up, you get your stuff, you, you put everything on, you clip it on just like you would if you're going to get off. Because what you do is like when you put your frame backpack on, you always clip everything on because you don't want someone just to pull your bag yeah. and take it, you know? So you make it, he goes, make it look, he's telling me in Spanish, make it look like we're really getting off. I was like, okay. He goes, and just follow me and just have a conversation with me and just act normal. He's like, we're going we're gonna to pretend like we're getting off. I go, okay, cool. And so... I'm waiting for it, you know, and and so we finally we get off on uh, there's a there's another stop. We don't do that then. Then the next one, my brother starts like, like you know, moving like checking the straps, kind of letting me know okay it's about to be time. So I start doing the same thing too. So I get up, kind of stretch a little bit, grab the bag, put it on, start clipping it on, and sure enough, dude, we see it like it's like like clear as day. The guy hits the the other dude, boom, like that. Like he tries to like do it like underneath the thing, but we see him move and do that, and then the guy turns around. And then so, like, they're getting ready, too. So it's, it, we're all getting ready to do something, right? So my brother has his bag on. I have my bag on. And then they say, they announce what the stop is, whatever. So we get up, and we're holding on to the, to the, to the rail. And then the train's kind of moving a little bit. And we're kind of looking at each other. We look back. They're looking at us now. We're looking at them. We all know that we all exist, and that something's about to happen. Train stops. Door was open. So on the train, there's a door at the end, on both ends. So... We were closest to the front of the train, so that door opens, and then the back door opens too. So when 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 we start making our way towards that door that just opened, there's like a there's like a middle section that connects all trains. Yeah. yeah and it's yeah. kind of like no man's land. Like you could actually stand in there while the train's moving, and you're good. Yeah. But it's like a separate 
It's just like it's just like it's where somebody can stand. Yeah, it's like a waiting if, area. If you need to, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it's so uh, like if someone's talking on the phone, they can step in there and they won't interrupt anybody else on the train or whatever. So we go there, right? And uh, the train's about to, to to stop, and we're already in there, right? And so they get up and they go to the backside. So now they're waiting there too, in the same spot that we're at, but we're in the front, they're in the back, and they're waiting to get off. So then we cu- we close the door so that they can't see all our movement. They can kind of see like through a window. You can see that we're still there, but you can't see all our movements or what we're doing, right? And uh, so they keep the door open because they're trying to see as much as they can towards our side. And then so my brother goes, okay, take a step down. He goes, and then just just kneel down. I go, okay, ready? And then so we step to the side like we're walking out as the doors are opening, and then we kneel down. And when we kneel down, they thought that we took the step downward to the platform so they get off, right? They get off real quick. And then my brother and then my brother and I stand up. We stand up, the doors go, and they close. And we're looking at them through the mirror. Dude, there was like 15 other guys waiting out there. And then the big dude that I told you I looked like AJ, but just with like a French shirt on, the white shirt with the stripes, goes, he snaps his hand and goes like that. And then my brother just goes like that, and he goes, just wave by. Dude, we were going to get jumped. <laughs> That's scary, dude. Dude, man. But my brother outsmarted them, man. That's scary. That's... There was no need to fight. There was no need to, but it was tense, man. But that's that's why you keep a, uh, you got to keep so a clear to... mind, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Like, we were calm because if we would have freaked out, they probably would have beat us up in the train and just taken our stuff. Yeah, I, would, I'm, I might have gone the opposite direction and just fucking just What's decided up or whatever? Yeah. like, okay, this, yeah. let's and, get it on and, right and here. And it's weird because uh, they knew. They knew we knew. We, you know, both sides knew. And uh, we outsmarted them. So they thought that we got off the train. And they were probably thinking, hell yeah, this is where all our Here's boys are at. Suck le bleu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so we're looking at them. And the big dude goes like like with his hand, like just like, like damn it, like next time. So he like waved by at us. We waved by at them. Damn, that's scary, dude. We would have gotten jumped, dude. We, we, they, we, everything, they would have taken everything, dude. So we went back, and, and, and uh, we were a little little pale, a little white, but we were happy that we got through it. And then like maybe like an hour later, we were laughing about it. We're like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and then my brother's like, we outsmarted them. And we're like just happy, dude, that we made there's, it there's, safely, there's dude. There's nothing better than when you outsmart somebody. Ooh, dude, but it me. was, dude. It's like, ooh. You know, uh, yeah, I get that. Yeah, fifteen other dudes out there just waiting at the platform. That's scary, man. That's that's really scary. I'm the type of guy. Hey, if we wouldn't have made that move to get off of that platform, because they were all there, I wonder if they would have gotten on the train. Probably that would have been an issue. Then, then they they would they would have followed us to wherever we were going. Yeah, then it would still be on. Yeah, you just just worse numbers. Just, yeah, <laughs> it, they would have just played with you then. Yeah, dude, you I had one of those. Uh, I had one of those. Uh, um, you know those uh, Swiss Army like they have like a bunch of different like blades yeah, on them yeah. and stuff I had it in my pocket the blade was up I was like dude I ain't going out like a chum I'm taking someone with me that's that's the first thing I'd be yeah. thinking about and my yeah. brother was next to the to the axe you know we're like dude we're not we're not going down like that like listen like we've lived a, a maybe a a somewhat life with with some privileges but so, but we also haven't been that privileged where we don't know how to use this dude. stuff <laughs> <laughs> there was one night, my uncle's only a few years older than me, right? And he hung out in the same general thing, and we partied with him one night. Yeah. And he's a tough dude, man. He'd get in a lot of fights all the time. And it just so happened we were there. Me, my other cousin, my one of my good friends, Rudy, and my friend, Freddie, we were just happened to be there and hang out with them. We're partying, drinking. These guys start kicking his butt. Oh, what do you do? Where were you guys at? We're at a party with another him. Party, party. Like, not in our area. Got we're it. in another area, so it's like they start kicking his butt, dude. And he's swinging. He's taking on two guys. He's a tough guy, dude. He's like he's been in this situation before, yeah. type thing. Not his first rodeo. Yeah, not a, <laughs> definitely not his first rodeo, dude. And um, I'm always the guy like, hey, take it easy, you know. Unless there's a fight coming at me, right? To, then I hit my switch. Somewhere in that at time, my cousin got in a fight with another guy, pulled the guy off, and was hitting the guy, and he was taking care of business, right? Another guy jumped on my cousin. 
Boy, my friend Ru Rudy just taking on another guy in the corner, and my friend Freddie was helping out with my uncle. Damn, it was bad. Yeah, we're in a situation, dude. Yeah. But nobody was hitting on me. No, everybody kind of left me alone, you know. All of a sudden, this dude out of nowhere hits my cousin. Three guys are on him. Whoa, man. And I think because I knew a lot of the people there still. So out of nowhere, dude, my brain just went like I blacked out. Next thing you know, people were like, Gary, man, do you know what you did? And I was like, like no. Like after it was over? Yeah, after it was over. I knocked like two guys out. I uh, pulled one guy off and like I was pulling him by his hair and just smacking him. And I was clear my end. By that time, my friends were able to kind of regain their composure composure, and jump in. And he, they were like, dude, you're like freaking. Dude, those fights are the worst, man. They're I dangerous. had no clue. Dangerous. And then man. finally my uncle was like, you don't even know, dude. You're going to get hit with a bat. And I just happened to see you. Because you were on, so focused on focused some on right one? here. Yeah. And the guy was about right there. And my uncle said that he took out that other guy. It's still a legendary story, dude. So he's like, let's go in the house. Let's go in the house. We're at his friend Lyle's house. Let's go in the house. You know, come on. You guys can leave in a little while. Trying to regroup. Yeah, get yeah. everybody but out. These guys and, will yeah, come back because yeah, yeah. they'll come back, dude. And they'll come back with some yeah, weapons something, yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this guy pulls up. And everybody knew him in our neighborhood. His name was Jay. And he was a little bit of a gangster. Not really, but comes back. And he was like, what's up? You know, and he comes in. He's like, But he yeah. was like. You like with you guys? Yeah, or? yeah. So oh, okay. he goes, I hear no, he wasn't with us. He was checking out who was here fighting. Right. What I mean because is like these he's, guys he was trying to back you guys up is what I'm no, saying. No, he was coming to like check to see to go back and tell him who was still there. Oh jeez. Yeah, and he came back and I just so happened oh, that I knew him and my damn. uncle knew him. That's and he good. was like this. He was like, wait a minute. So things were gonna get worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. And these were older guys, dude. He's like, wait a minute, Bobby. That's your nephew? That's the little nephew that lives on the corner over there? And he's like, yeah. He's like, they just kicked all those dudes' butts? He was like, yeah, my nephew went off on one of them. He was like, yeah, somebody's really messed up over there. They want to come back and, like, shoot up the place, man. What? He goes, he, and he pulls up his shirt, and he was packing. He was like, I thought you guys were, he goes, you guys are from my neighborhood, man. Get out of here. They just got their ass kicked. Get out of oh, here. Oh, so they dropped it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, I'm going back and I'm going to tell them. Oh, just got the chills. Because they were telling them that we were gangsters and dude, stuff. Dude, you guys could have got far, shot up. Far from it, dude. We were like the nicest kids, dude. But we we handled our business with like eight people and there was like four of us. I highly doubt that they were the nicest kids. I don't deny that you guys were maybe some good kids. Dude, but not the nicest. My friend Freddie is a... <laughs> Wine, he's a wine uh, rep, <laughs> sells wine. <laughs> My friend Rudy is a doctor, he's a chiropractor. Oh, what the? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My cousin Brian, me the, and him are the only yeah, heathens. There was no dude. gangsters there. There was no gangsters. Oh, but there, they, they made it seem like it was like these guys jumped, jumped us, us, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and so these guys dude. came strapped? Yeah, oh, they were dude. coming back strapped. I could get and, real dangerous real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we beat their ass, dude. Yeah, we, but, I was like, uh, yeah, but it was one of those nights where. They brought me and my cousin back to this house. Like, like they were like, you need to get out of here, you know, and whatever. And because it just happened right after the fight. And I grabbed my cousin. We took off. We're always looking out for each other. I don't know. And we're walking. We're like, and then somebody pulls up. He's like, what are you guys doing around here? Told him, hey, we'll give you a ride. And my cousin is a real trustworthy guy. He's like. Dude, we get in this car and this guy pulls on it and we're beating everybody. <laughs> I was like, right on. He's like, I'm getting in the front, you get in the back. Funny. You watch what he does. It. And he took us. He was like, was cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, he was like, dude, you need to get out of here. Yeah. Let me help you out. <laughs> yeah, the gods are watching out for us, dude. But we got a couple fights like that. Like, we like to fight. So dangerous because, like, in a moment like that, in the melee, like, you know, it's not just fists, dude. Someone can grab something, a knife, whatever, man, and just. Dude, so I had, so I had a uh, dangerous. I had a friend. Uh, we were at a party, and we were in a couple Marines. Somebody knew these Marines. If just, anybody's wondering, this was a long time ago. <laughs> this was a long time ago. Yeah, like it's not, this is not stuff that happened yesterday. There was a couple Marines that came to party with these girls. Oh, they're my cousins. They're just out of San Diego. They they got the weekend off. They're like our age, but they were in the Marines at yeah. the time. And we're in this place. We're shooting pool. 
And this one Marine's like, my buddy Rudy, who's the chiropractor now, super nice guy, dude, super, but he's into martial arts, he's into different things, he's, he knows how to take care of himself. We're shooting pool, and he looks at me, he's like, this guy's giving me crap, man. I'm not going to take it, you know, after a while. <laughs> I was like, dude, they're two Marines, dude. These guys are, like, trained right now to, like, yeah. go at it, you know? Oh, so one of the dudes that the, there was a Marine was, was picking giving... on my buddy. Oh, okay. And he goes, I'm not going to put up with this, dude. I am not going to put up with this. He goes, call Kelly. And Kelly was our buddy who was 6'4", all muscle, <laughs> uh, big big black dude that all he did was love to fight dude he's still a bouncer to this day in laguna at some yeah. of these rave parties and stuff like that he's been in that game forever like that's what he does that's that's what he does dude kicks Knuckles ass and takes yeah, yeah. yeah he's a he's like he's huge dude i'm here for he, two things he aspired to be a wwf wrestler dude. i'm here for two things yep. drink beer and fight so he comes and, looks like we're all out of beer and uh <laughs> And Rudy goes, goes, hey man, that guy right there is giving me crap. And my oh, buddy Kelly goes, goes, well, he ain't gonna do anything to you while I'm here. I'm just letting you know. Like, don't worry about yeah, it. And yeah. And then he goes, well, he's got a buddy over there. And he goes, uh, don't worry about it, dude. If they do something, we'll we'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. And my buddy Rudy wasn't a wuss. He just is a very down to earth guy. Just and, letting you guys know. Yeah. And this dude kept just wailing on it. And my buddy Kelly goes, hey, man, you just need to chill out. Dude. Was he just like talking smack or what? Talking smack. You don't know what he's doing. <laughs> and my buddy Rudy's not a drinker. He's just the guy that just hung out with us. Yeah. And he was just getting, like, he was getting it's personal. Hard to, it's hard, too. Like, if you're not a drinker and you're around people that are drinking, dude, like, you have to put so up with this, all that nonsense, this you know? This is so rad, dude. This is so rad. He, like, he shot the ball and the guy said something. And, and uh, my buddy Rudy goes, you say it again, dude. I'm going to knock you out. And the Marine So, he, so like, he just got fed up. You know the Marine guy looked like uh, Ruben Padilla? Oh, yeah. Stocky, super fit. <laughs> just like a ball of muscle. Muscle, dude. Yeah. Like he looked Ruben like, Padilla, man. Yeah. I haven't seen that guy in forever. He, he looked like he was like, you don't mess with him, guy. right? You don't mess with him. Dude. My buddy Kelly sees the other guy. And as the other guy starts to walk over, he goes... I would go take your seat unless you want to get involved in this too. Damn. And this, the, the Marine dude knew. Like the other dude was just like, oh crap. We're yeah, this trouble. is real. Yeah. We're in trouble. Yeah. So my buddy Rudy goes, I'm going to shoot one more time. If you don't shut your mouth, I'm going to see the stick. I'm going to hit you with it and knock you out. <laughs> and the guy goes, you couldn't do anything. So he goes like this and breaks, you yeah, know, boom. breaks, yeah. boom. But he purposely does it. He knows how to shoot pool mm -hmm. to where he purposely does it so the ball flies. And everybody does this. And as he turns around, Rudy takes the pool cue oh. and smacks him across the face and knocks him out, dude. And we were like, yeah! And his buddy's like, well, we don't want any problems. It's like from a movie, dude. Yeah. It was, so he hit it like that so everybody could turn around. Everybody turned like around. Like distractible. Yeah, boom. And, he just, and he took the back end of the... And just like right across his face, dude. And this dude is like the most nicest guy. Like he's a chiropractor. Though. Yeah, he's a chiropractor. He's like I'll bless him. In fact, I'm gonna tell him I talked about this, <laughs> and he's gonna be like, oh, dude, that, was good, "That was a good one, man." <laughs> yeah, Woo. yeah. He 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 didn't take really any shit, but he was just one of those guys yeah. that like could defend himself. He just but he never got into it with people, you know. Oh hell! I gotta man. reach out to Ruben Padilla now. You know, he went to Santa Fe too. Oh really? Yeah. He went to the same high school. Dude? Yeah, he went to Santa Fe too. He's a. You know, I did he's... tough mutter with that dude. Yeah. Yeah. He's in law enforcement. You know that, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, he's been an officer for yeah, ever, forever. forever, dude. Like a really long time. Yeah. I love that dude. I used to train with him too. Dude, we were in this tough mutter. True story about Ruben. There was about eight of us, and we all did it. He was you know? funny too. Man. And uh, he he looks like a short little stocky dude, Strong, but dude. he was so in shape and uh, and. Um, we we're all staying together, and we're like, "Where'd Ruben go, dude?" <laughs> His nose would bleed all the time, dude. And he'd take off, and, <laughs> and like, then come back, and then all of a sudden he'd be like, "Oh yeah, I was just seeing what was next." Dude, stick with us. We don't want to lose you. Oh, take off. So he was like in real good shape. Yeah, so he'd, he'd go, go up and do it, and, and then come, come back. back and oh, that's like, <laughs> that's kind of cool, though. And he was just making fun of me. Dude. Like, <laughs> 
And he knew a bunch of people there because they were all oh, the cops. Funny. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that guy was cool, man. I love training with him. He was funny. He always had such a good attitude. Like you punch him in the face, he'd always bleed. He'd yeah. bleed profusely. Like you barely touch his nose, and he would always bleed. And we'd always <laughs> make fun of that. And uh, he'd make fun of it too. It's funny. I saw him once. Uh, I was here in a. It was going down Main Street. This is a while ago. Going down Main Street, and I hear, "Hey, Mo. Hey, Mo, what's up, man?" And I turn around, and I'm like, Ruben, what's up? And I was yeah, there with Gloria. contact him. Yeah, I do. I'm going to reach out to him and come check. He hasn't seen the studio. No, no, no. You know? no I'm sure he has. I have him on Facebook, so I'm going I'm to look him up. Yeah, yeah. He was fun to hang out. He was out fun with. to hang out. He was yeah, fun, yeah. dude. And he would always tell me, hey, well, when are we going to meet up at uh, I'll make sure it again? <laughs> it's just like, dude, anytime you want, man. That guy was cool. I like him. I like him. Hopefully, he's doing well, especially with all this stuff going on with like how law enforcement being treated and stuff, man. So hopefully, he's doing well. But nowadays, you just can't do that stuff as kids, dude. And back then, you fight it out, do whatever. Hash yeah, you can't it out. do that stuff no more, dude. Yeah. It, it, it either escalates too much or there's some real or, repercussions. Or you get somebody who, who can't really defend himself and do something really stupid. Or you do something stupid yourself. yourself. Yeah. You know, and yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were pretty lucky as kids. But yeah, we got in a lot of fights, yeah. dude, as kids. Yeah. Just even with the, ourselves, dude, we'd be like, friendly one minute and be like playing basketball or something next thing you know it'd be like two friends just like <laughs> smack, 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 fighting. Smack. yeah and then later you know you go yeah. and... it's so funny yeah, yeah. but it, it's different times now that's for sure man good it's st- good and bad yeah it's good and bad yeah. good stories today man i think i think if people fought more there'd be less anger and less yeah. there'd be a little more respect and... yeah well maybe train more i don't know about fighting Fighting. Fighting is different. Fighting is different. Yeah. This court is giving me fits today. I know, man. I can see it. I'm You're bad- like fighting. It, <laughs> I'm dude. battling Jeez, this court. Man, relax. <laughs> it's like, what is up? How you today doing, Mr. Is your birthday. That's what the song that's playing out there right now. Birthday music, man. Birthday music. It's my birthday, too. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is he doing? Uh, <laughs> I'll just hold this. Uh, I'm not editing that out. That is awesome. What did you just do? I don't. I, all you I broke did, it. I, I, <laughs> 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 wow. Okay. Uh, let's, just, let's just do this like this. I guess. Wow. Somebody's messing with me in here. Oh. <laughs> Every two minutes, like. All right. So you teach at six. You got about fifteen minutes left. Uh, let's call it. Uh, let's call it, dude. Yeah. Right on. Uh, hopefully I'll get in here by a couple more before Friday. So. Yeah, absolutely. And then we'll make a fire one, dude. Yeah, we'll, put, yeah. we'll, we'll compile all the good stuff. All right, guys. Cool. We love you guys. Um, Gary H72 on Instagram. Also, Gary and Abel podcast on Facebook and Instagram. Very cool. And, uh, of course, me, Simple Man 0707 on Instagram. And then um, Black Belt Collective, Krav Maga uh, on all of those. I, and on YouTube, look us up. Quarantine with Gary Nabel, and it is also on uh, Black Belt Collective. Yeah, very cool. All right, guys. Love you guys, man. We'll talk to you later. Uh